Welcome to episode 25, the Flatoween episode of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Your host is an exiled Anunnaki queen, now serving as science officer in Starfleet, Patricia Steer. Patricia? Hello. I'm here. It took me a moment. Some of the people serving me were too annoying, so I had to dismiss them. Thank you for the introduction. And as rightly you should you? have. I am actually, I'm a kind of a dual character, but I am martial law, uh, both figuratively and literally. Uh, martial law as a concept in the conspiracy world, we all know that one day they'll come for you. The police in the streets, see, police in the streets. Uh, so I'm coming as martial law. Martial law is also a comic book that I own from 1990. Uh, written by Pat Mills and Kevin O'Neill uh, about an anti-superhero superhero, kind of a cop, because in that and it was an alternate future where uh, superheroes became bad and ran amok, and he, you know, enforced the law, kind of like a like a um, Judge Dredd, but in a superhero world. So there you go. Pretty this cool, could huh? go down very cool. This could go down as the geekiest episode ever of <laughs> Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Yeah. Because you've got a comic book character and uh, also conspiracy character with the whole police aspect. Oh, and yeah. I am Star Trek. So. Yeah, you're Star Trek and you're Star, you're Star Trek from the original series. Yes, I am. And I'm going to stand up just to show the rest stand of the Stand up outfits. real quick and show people this I thing. can't show the lower part because the camera won't get it. But here comes the rest. Ready? Very impressive. Authentic, I might add. Yes, it certainly is. For this case. And I, uh, this gear is actually not a costume. <laughs> That's the sad part. For those people who know that, that I do prepper stuff, uh, I've got a full-blown, you know, this is an actual police riot shield. Uh, I also have a full-blown armored helmet to go with it. Uh, and I was going to wear that to start, but it's really tough to do headphones with that thing. So I just yeah. went with, with the battle dress uniform cap. But uh, let you know, this is not a you know normal helmet. This is a wonderful uh, riot gear helmet that I initially got because I was a prepper. Uh, I initially got it for zombies. You're not a true prepper until you actually gear up for zombies, and uh, this was kind of you know the extension of that. And then it sort of kind of fell into kind of a martial law type thing. It's like, well, I've got enough gear here that if something actually happened with martial law, I could actually just kind of blend in. <laughs> And just kind of walk around. So, yeah, here, let me show you real quick. Can you see it? Yeah, I want to see the back, too. See the back? See? That is just so amazing. Yeah. I love it. And, of course, I had to geek out. You can probably see here on this shoulder. I put a little uh, <laughs> alien insignia. Because, yeah, you know, well, if you're going to do the... With me so. being an Anunnaki queen and you having the alien insignia on your, uh, on your arm, we are basically going to be slated in the comment section by people who are not fans of uh, flat earth by you know i don't know saying we're the, the derailing aliens. the movement no we are not look it's halloween it's have flat some, -ween. Flat -ween. yeah it's flat have some <laughs> uh, get have some fun with this thing uh and by the way the sticker is really cool that's from the 90s that it's a vintage sticker it's from the uh, schwa corporation they were ones that kind of dealt with uh, world domination and, and fun little books. And it's spelled uh, S-C-H-W-A, schwa. And they had a bunch of stickers that you could get. And it was really, really cool. It was like a one-man operation. So anyway, fun stuff. I love your costume. And I'm I love fun wearing mine. Thank you. I've got other things to show you about my costume. And then we'll go on to Q&A. By the way, Q&A is enabled, not chat, because we would like to invite you to... Uh, you know, send any sort of uh, question you want. We'll read it on the air. I'll read it and Mark will answer it or I'll answer it. It can be about uh, anything, costumes, uh, what you're doing. It you doesn't even have to be a question. What you're doing for Flatoween, uh, just, you know, hey, sky's the limit. But let me show you this. I've got this. And you know what this is, right, Mark? What? Oh, you can't see Tri it because you're... I can't see it. Is it a tricorder or well, a phaser? How about when I open it up? Well, hope, hope, oh, does it make it sounds? Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, a tricorder. This is a communicator. That's a communicator? Yes, it's a communicator. Oh, well, sorry. See, it looks like this. People are going to go, oh, what a dork. You didn't get the, <laughs> com the communicator. I stuff. like this part when you can flip it like this, you know. Flip phones before there were flip phones. Exactly. I Beam mean, me that, 
that thing's from the early 60s. And, you know, only later did we figure out that, uh, yeah, you can do some cool stuff with that. Then we'll see if you can identify this. Oh, it's not making the noise it's supposed to make. Battery might be dead. Uh, no, the um, electron impulses aren't connected. There's no batteries in space. Anyway, uh, got my phaser here. It doesn't work. I should just throw it over my shoulder, but I don't really want to break it. But that would have been funny for comedy. That's really cool that you have a full-blown authentic. Have you been to like a cosplay thing, like a Comic-Con or a no, uh -uh. Star Trek convention? You no, just own just one of these. I have this stuff. I have, I like costumes. Is it, you know what? I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> the, um, do you have, um, uh, and I mean, I've got a tricorder too, because. Did you use this for Halloween? Open it up? Yes, I did. Fair I enough. didn't make myself the Anunnaki queen. You know, you can do a multitude of things with this. I've had Vulcaneers on before with a oh, yeah. you know face painted a different color. But yeah. you know, I find that I'll give people a better look at that thing. It's pretty neat. Um, I find that painting your face up for Halloween. Oh, I almost broke it. <laughs> Quality merchandise. Call 1-800-G-A-R-B-A-G-E. <laughs> uh, I find when you paint your whole body with a color, it's just too annoying. I mean, it starts yeah. smearing all over your clothes and other people and then getting it off later, especially if you've had a few cocktails. I mean, you just go to bed wearing it. <laughs> Sheets are green when you wake up, but maybe that's too much information. It is too much information, <laughs> but that's all right. We should probably continue on with the show. All right, let's do that. Uh, Flat Earth and other hot potatoes and uh, Mark Sargent and me, Patricia Steer. And uh, he's martial law and I'm a, an Anunnaki queen who has been exiled and is now a, a, a member of Starfleet. So what are you? Let us know in Q&A. And I'm going to put my glasses on, which I know in the future in space, people don't wear glasses, but I do. No. I'm old school. <laughs> uh, we do have a bunch of uh, you know questions rolling in. And if you do not know how to get into Q&A, we had some discussion last week about how to do it. Uh, ask somebody else or just sign into your Google Plus account. Click on the screen. There's some boxes. It says join the conversation. And I believe that will work for you. But ask somebody else and they might be able to help you. It's quite hard to explain it, but supposedly pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it. All right. So first comment and our question is from Brap Allgood. And it is, I'd like to ask if it's possible for you two to be any geekier. <laughs> Should have pre-read that. Actually, uh, it is possible. Oh, it's it possible. possible. <laughs> Absolutely. If, uh, if we were geekier, we would have done uh, some sort of matching thing. Uh, where I would have had a, a Star Trek uniform as well, and we would have done some sort of acting weird out. ritual. Yeah, yeah, weird ritual. <laughs> yeah, it could have gotten really weird. So, no, I think this is fine. I think it's fantastic. Uh, we've got a comment from, um, um, uh, let's see. Oh, it's another comment from Brad Balgood, who says he's the globe Earth for Halloween. <laughs> but he says, sorry, no pictures. So uh, Get that's out probably of here. a great costume to be the Globe the, Earth. He's the Globe Earth. It would be a great costume, but it would, it would only make any sense at a Flatoween party, which there probably aren't any. Maybe there will be someday. No, no. You know what a great costume would be is if you took like a sandwich board and made it kind of circular and did, you know, the Earth on both sides, a flat Earth map on both sides, then you could go as the Flat Earth. That's it's, great. It's like a two-dimensional thing. That kind of costume, I don't like either. Just for myself. I like looking at them, and I think they're fantastic and creative. I like a costume that reminds me of my, my normal clothes. Yeah. You know what I mean? No paint all over my body, and I can move around, you know, however I want. Eat, drink. Um, the costumes that make you wear a big thing, you know, it's kind of a great. People laugh and think it's great, but then after that, you're kind of stuck. And those costumes that have a full mask, like if yeah. you and I went to a Halloween party and you were wearing that that helmet, I mean, you know, yeah. wouldn't be too fun for you. Um, I mean, it'd be okay, actually. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, I'd be fine with it. We could make a like a little one of those uh, things people use when they want to drink in public, uh, like uh, bring their own alcohol, sneak it into a sporting event with yeah. like a uh, what do you call that, like um. A straw that's inside your costume and put some like, oh, right, right, your right. favorite beverage would be in there. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew Eugene Rosa says, I'm dressing up for Flatoween as Mark and Patricia's love child. Oh, my God. I wonder what that would look like. We probably don't even want to know. Combination of Cleopatra and Shrek is what it would look <laughs> like. That's good. That's good. That is good. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. We've got Athabasca Media 
saying, happy Halloween, how come they use flat earth time zones? Shouldn't the time zones bulge at the equator and thin to the poles? How big is the plane really? We don't know yet. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the scale of the plane is still in question because nobody's bothered to map it out yet. Uh, in fact, there's been some speculation recently that the outer, you know, when you get out past the equator, which is, you know, the outer ring, that uh, distances are, are so far exaggerated that time zones are distorted as well. We don't know because it's mostly ocean out there and nobody's bothered to map it yet. Well, so. eventually these things will be done, maybe. I mean, I hope Maybe someday. one day soon. Yes. Um, Robin Poe, who was my guest on episode number 23, she's a former um, Army radio officer who uh, confirmed one, one of the many confirmations from the professionals. You've done many, and I've done one now, um, and actually two, because Brian Mullen is also, you know, a uh, professional uh, in, in his field. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, Robin Poe says, click on the nine square icon in the right upper corner to get into chat so you've got to go to youtube first you probably should sign in and then click on the nine square icon in the upper right corner and you're in like flynn whatever that and ask questions yeah yes because chat, chat's just a free-for-all chat is not really questions chat is just yeah. people that's what it is it's literally just chat people throw people stuff enjoy out. it and i have chat enabled for every one of my shows except for the once a week thing i'm doing with you just because i like this interaction um all right. Thank you, Robin, for telling us that. Mervyn Trimble says, what's your thoughts on the skull comet that NASA posted about, by the way? I'm new here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> the skull I'm comet. So, oh, my Lord. That thing. I'm so glad somebody brought that up because I actually forgot about it. I actually pushed it out of my brain earlier this morning. And that was NASA is so desperate that they coincidentally. So, so it wasn't enough that they said there's an asteroid flying by tonight, right? It wasn't enough that they pitched that, some globe reinforcement for the last week. No, this morning they say, oh, by the way, the asteroid looks like a skull. And they had a um, picture and it was kind of distorted and there was kind of kind of the making out of an eyes and a nose, no teeth, obviously. But right. it was ridiculous. It was it was it's sad is what it is. NASA, you, the moves you are making, uh, uh, they don't scream desperation yet, but you're getting there. You're you're, yeah. you're you're right there on the line. Well, Pluto, that was super desperate, you know, with the image of the dog on there. And then the well, other NASA image of Earth with when you with turned it upside down. Sex. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those those were bad enough. And, and whoever the animator was, yeah, throwing that Disney Disney reference out there. That was great because Disney animators were notorious for that. Well, thank you, Mervyn Trimble, for that, for reminding us of the skull. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wish you didn't, but no. Um, let's see. We've got Nevermind. Um, this is a new person in Q&A anyway. Uh, what do you guys think about the fact that we don't know what's further than, um, well, he says 12 kilometers, but we'll say eight miles uh, below us? We don't well, know. What was the question? What do you, mean, well, what's what, further what, what do you guys think about the fact that we don't know what's below us? Oh, well, I mean, I did a clue dedicated on it, uh, which went into, it was called depth perception. And it went into the fact that it's all mechanical. If the, if you, by the time you get down to eight kilometers, if it's nothing but a magma system, uh, you know, if you're on a globe, then it's this free floating huge chunks of magma, but in an enclosed system, it could be anything. It could be literally a, a molten steel uh, system, or I'm sorry, molten rock system, which pumps magma around. So that's that's what I think it is, but mm. but yeah, it's very very curious how we can't dig down that far, uh, and you would think that with atomic weapons you might be able to to punch down a little further, but that's classified. Nobody's talking about that. Hmm. Well, also, I mean, there's so, the, the the ocean's the same way. We can't really go uh, deep into the ocean. How how deep have we gone into the ocean, you Mariana mean, Trench? Um, well, we've gone to the floor of the ocean, right? But that that would be how many miles? I think um, it's about the same. It depends. I mean, some of the, like the Marianas Trench, I think only goes down like five miles. Okay. But but still, I mean, you're not going to be doing any drilling down there. Right. So it seems that, yeah, no matter where you go, even if you went to the bottom of the Marianas Trench and then f found a way to start drilling down there, I still think you're only going to go down about eight miles. So cross, so, once you hit, bet, you know, once you start going from the ground down, eight miles. Eight miles. Hmm. Okay. Um, we've got uh, Paul R. with Patricia. Are you aware that the Star Trek logo on your costume is the ring of Saturn? Here we go. So anybody yeah. can take a look. Um, 
I wasn't aware of that, but I imagine that uh, the symbology of uh, a Star Trek is is uh, rife with negative oh, symbols. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I am not wearing this costume in any way to uh, be doing anything Saturnian or Masonic. It's a Halloween costume. It's Flatoween. It's just for fun. But it is interesting. I didn't know that, Paul R. Um, Really, no, nobody's gonna. Yeah, go after her costume. Don't. Nobody's gonna pay attention <laughs> to the fact that I'm dressed as a, as a a police officer. <laughs> well, that probably will be in the comments as well, and then, <laughs> or something coming, later. Saying coming that we're, for you. We're ruining the flat Earth movement. Yes, right, we the, are by the, trying to help it. Okay. <laughs> people are probably going to say that was actually in Mark's closet, and you know, it's just a, an outfit he wears when he goes, you know, looking for people's guns. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've already been. It's already been said that you're a drone strike pilot. Absolutely. So you're also. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going house to house. And I'm coming for you. <laughs> that's how far away the camera is, by the way. If you guys didn't figure that out by now, camera's yeah, you still are far away. A good two feet from me, or two feet from my outstretched arm. Ah, this thing's I'm, good. That's not comfortable, is it? Well, the sides, I'm, they're not they are not meant to really kind of be recreational, you know, like just kind of kicking around in your house. Uh, they're they are meant really to, to be out there and getting some, some zombie action or right. some or some protesters, one of the two. Right. <laughs> Hopefully not flat earth protesters, though. You'd let no, them go. I'd let them go. Everybody else set my nightstick to womp. <laughs> <laughs> Q&A is enabled on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's Mark Sargent and myself, Patricia Steer. In about mm, 10 minutes or so, we're going to have a special guest on our Flat Ween episode, and it's David Weiss of Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, and he's going to talk to us about a uh, theory that he's got about star trails that uh, he spoke with Mark and I about earlier, and I think uh, David's very excited about it, and it is, is interesting. So we're going to talk to him about that. He's going to pop in, and I know that he won't be able to stay long, but uh, yeah. So next question is from David Graham. Is it possible to make a nuclear-powered probe? I have no idea. You mean like, like, a, like an underground probe? Or maybe, would, yeah, it would yeah. have to be. Or yeah, yeah. Go, it, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, well, not not nuclear, not like a drilling apparatus, but it wouldn't make any difference anyway. What I'm talking about is that when you have to make a deep underground base, the easiest way to carve out a big chunk of, of open area is to detonate a nuclear weapon down there. It just creates a big spherical cavern. And granted, you got to deal with the radiation afterwards, but that's nominal compared to the, uh, the huge amounts of labor you would save. So yeah, yeah, digging digging with atomic weapons. Oh yeah, that's that's a great idea actually. It's, it's kind of like fishing by throwing you know something explosive into the water. Oh yeah, fishing with dynamite. Done that. <laughs> you have. It is not. I'm sorry. You're My vegan I'm sensibilities vegan. are offended. Well, and look, since I, I am a former, I'm, I'm, I'm an Anunnaki queen, now science officer in Starfleet, I may have to have you beheaded. We'll think about it. Please forgive me, <laughs> my queen. I thought you were saying please. <laughs> like you wanted it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, David Graham, for that question. Next question is from Robin Poe. It is, there was a piece in the news about the White House pro, I'm going to fix these glasses here, uh, protecting from a solar flare today. Wow. What exactly is SDO, Solar Dynamics Observatory, and SOHO, Solar and Heliocentric Observatory? Are they simulations? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the stereo, and all the satellites, including the ones that focus on the sun, like stereo ahead and stereo behind. Uh, there's for people that don't know, we supposedly also have satellites not just orbiting the Earth and not just geosynchronous, you know, where they stay, you know, above one city or one area of land. But we supposedly also have satellites that are traveling in front of the Earth, uh, uh, its orbit around the sun and behind <clears> it. <throat> it's called stereo ahead and stereo behind. And they, you know, you can look at other planets, supposedly, and and I used to follow those. I mean, there's been, I think it was, uh, I can't remember if it was Suspicious Observer, or there was other pe people on YouTube that actually tracked that stuff and did an out, you know, monitor on a daily basis. And now I just kind of dismissed the whole thing. I said, you know what, I trust nothing. Anything, you know, any any picture agree. you show me up there. I used to be a YouTube subscriber to Suspicious Observer, as well as Dutch Sense, and I I'm no longer subscribed, although I think they're good people and doing interesting things. Yeah. It just doesn't fit with the model of flat Earth, they and they could don't. easily, you know, 
think about it and become flat earthers, but it would undo all that they've done. Yeah, they just and there is know. some truth to what they're talking about for sure. Yeah. So I felt bad on subscribing, but then I felt bad having them as subscriptions on my channel because anybody who uh, goes to my channel will see what I've subscribed to, and it would sort of undo what I'm doing. Yeah. It'd be like me subscribing to I don't know um, Mark Kelly's channel if he had a channel on NASA, the one who's supposedly on the ISS. So it would be oh, just yeah. weird. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, we've set, got set a, set a record for hanging out in his house and and doing nothing. Yeah, fantastic. I think he's in an underground base. Whatever. A really posh he, one. Yeah. Either way, he, he's sitting there just kicking his feet up, going, "Eh, hey, record." He's probably uh exactly one year in space. Yay. <laughs> uh, he's probably watching this show right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, David Weiss is here from deep inside the rabbit hole. Hello. Joining Hello. Us. Hi. David. How are you? Good. How are you guys? No picture. I, I wanted to I was, see. I was. Here I am. Guess what I am. Maybe I should oh, tell you first. Always going to turn it on. I'm uh, a total dweeb that believes in flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's and see the camera. I turned it on, but it didn't come on. <laughs> Same thing happened to mine. Oh, that, was, that was spectacular. It was. You're great. Fantastic. Can you uh, see me? No, wow. not yet. One, two, three. Now I got to go out and come back in. Give me two. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's all about showmanship. <laughs> Really? Yeah, it's, well, my camera, when I tried to turn it on, didn't really work either. So sometimes that happens. Google Hangouts, lots of fun, lots of weird glitches. We're lucky to have Google Hangouts. Um, should we ask a little quick question while David comes back? Um, q and A's enabled, by the way. Oh, he's back so soon, I can't get to it. We were going to try to get as, to as many questions as possible, but not during the time when uh, when David Weiss is here, But when because David can't stay very long. So uh, you Actually, know. I can stay, but you know, whatever, okay. it's fine. Okay. Don't worry right. about it. Um, All right. So I'm a dweeb that believes in flat earth, <laughs> crazy person with the okay. initials, whatever you want to make of it. It's the best I could do. M.S. What are you, serious? I'm not looking at the screen. Should I turn around and like to look at him? His initials? <laughs> oh, that's, that's why you have that, that blank stare on your face. Wait, I, well, I, can't, I can't see you, so do you want me to turn around and look at you real quick? I have yes, a yes. tinfoil hat on that says uh, MS on it. Oh, and my wow. Oh, because, because uh -huh. be, Miss Steer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's that's not, what it is. Maybe. Yeah, it's not, it's not me. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, Dude. Huh, interesting. <laughs> I'm very you know what? I'm, I have to tell you, every day when I get that email notification from P Suspicious Observer that I just delete because I don't watch it anymore, and I go, maybe I should unsubscribe, and then I hear you saying exactly what I'm thinking, and uh, I'm the same way. I, I did unsubscribe, and I actually joined his uh, his separate, like, exclusive website at one point, paid paid the money, and, and did the whole nine yards. I was into it. Well, I have a as question. A, as a broadcaster, he's really good, and same with Dutch. They're both very well spoken, entertaining. They put together good videos. I wish they were putting their talents to use in the flat Earth world. Mark, is he getting all of his data like 100% exclusively from NASA feeds, and therefore he could possibly believe what they're showing him, and he has no other way to view um, the data that he's getting independently? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Which is why I kind of feel bad. He he gets all his feeds from either either the NASA satellites or the European uh, satellites or maybe even the Japan satellites at this point. Yeah, yeah, he believed. Of course he would. Why wouldn't he believe it? I believe. Not only did he believe it, I believed him. You know, like like everybody would that's watching his stuff. It's like wow, solar flares. Ooh, you know, spooky stuff. I mean, how many times do we have to see a giant solar flare could you know could change uh, everything in in our atmosphere? And yet nothing's ever happened. Has anybody else filmed, you know, a solar flare with a telescope? I mean, are there solar flares? I don't know. Okay. That's, a good, that's an excellent question. Because I, I, what, what private company is going to do it? I mean, you put a telescope at the sun, you're going to burn your eyes unless you have a special telescope. Well, yeah, you'd, you'd have to have a satellite, and all the satellites have to register with the... Um, uh, the AST, the Aeronautics and Space Transportation Bureau. So, Patricia, am I, uh, is my mic too hot? No, you're good. No, you're good. I just suggested my mic and your mic. Oh, okay. Um, because being a woman, my voice can be drowned out easily. 
So I have another question, Mark. What about that uh, Shoemaker uh, asteroid that hit Jupiter, Jupiter that was filmed? Now, was that filmed independently? I, th- I, I wasn't. I'm not sure the, if it was. The, shoe, the Shoemaker Levy uh, asteroid yeah. that broke up and supposedly hit Jupiter in the in the early 90s. Yeah. The um no, that was an independent. That was that was all NASA. They were they were tra- They're the only ones that supply. If they're not supplying the footage directly, they control. Everything about everybody else's package that's up there. So right. yeah, I mean, well, okay. Now Shoemaker and Levy, they were the ones that discovered it, of course. You know, they they saw it, but all the really close stuff was done by NASA. As did they know. did they see anything? Who are Shoemaker and Levy? They sound like Illuminati puppets to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just, we, we don't know. We don't know. And then there was wonderful Sounds little like Simon and Schuster. <laughs> there were all sorts of fringe stories after that. Like, you know, there were these weird radio transmissions as the asteroid, you know, as the I'm sorry, as the comet broke up or and and uh, or the asteroid broke up and, and fell into Jupiter's atmosphere. So yeah, we don't we don't know, but it's a good reinforcement tool. For me, it's just one of many. And that is again, no matter if you're talking about Jupiter, the funny thing on the top of Saturn. Pluto, the face on Mars, its they all reinforce the exact same thing. And that is, it doesn't matter if you believe in them or not. They all reinforce one, they're, they're there for one reason, and that is you're on the globe thinking of whatever's happening out there, deciding for yourself whether you should believe it or not believe it. But either way, you're always going to believe the first part, which is you're on a globe. Yeah, the same as uh, what was mentioned earlier in Q&A, the, uh, the skull... Skull, skull asteroid. Or asteroid, yeah. excuse me. Right. Yeah, yeah, the skull asteroid. The skull asteroid, really, that flies by Earth on Halloween night? I, I'm sorry, there's, you wouldn't even write that into a B movie. It's just it's just so horrible. Like, well, before we get to the Star Trails, David, which I know you're here for, and I know you ha- you don't have much time that you can spend with us today. I'm, I'm actually okay. Don't worry about it. I'm fine. Okay. I'm just, okay. you know, keeping you in mind. Um okay. Oh, well, now I've lost track of what I was going to say. I was so concerned about the before, time of you. Before I get to the Star Trails, you were oh. saying... Q&A, mm-hmm. something coming up. Uh, nah, question. lost, gone. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. <laughs> I guess we'll get to the Star Trails then. So, yes. Mark, you made you made a comment the other day uh, talking about the Internet hive mind. And, uh, yeah. and you know, I, it really made me think about it. And it is amazing, you know, like when my investigation on uh, Sandy Hook and 9-11, it was the hive mind that brought these little things together. You know, so many l- people bringing in just a little piece of evidence and it all comes together. And it's like it's like a super computer. It's, it's phenomenal. So I, I like that term. And uh, I actually been utilizing it. I was looking for a couple of videos and I just sent a message out and boom, two seconds later, somebody comes back with what I was looking for. So that, that's great. And I'm asking for the hive mind to think about what I'm going to try to um, illustrate tonight. And uh, somebody like uh, Rory Cooper, my perspective, I think that's his name. Um, if he could, if somebody could animate this, that would be amazing, right? Yeah. So, so uh, one of the big things is, uh, you know, in the southern outer hemisphere, uh, people say that the stars rotate in the opposite direction. And they make circles in the opposite direction, and that can only happen on a on a ball Earth. Um, I have yet to see any real proof of this, but I do believe that maybe they appear to go in that direction. So. Let's start in the inner northern hemisphere where you're looking towards Polaris, towards the north, and the stars are rotating around Polaris, and uh, let's say they're going counterclockwise. There's two motions that you're seeing. One, you are seeing the, the star make that circle around Polaris, but you're also seeing the stars approaching you from the vanishing point, coming up over your head, and continuing into the distance into the vanishing point, and that creates the false illusion of another arc. Just like when you see the sunrise and sunset, you know, in the distance, it's down on the horizon. When it comes over your head, it's way over your head, and then it goes back down to the horizon again, but it's really going in a straight line. We all yeah. we all know this. Okay. Like if you're standing on a street with street lights going in both directions, they're down lower on the far ends and they're directly over your head. So there's the arch. So you have these two arches, and that Per- perceives in your mind this counterclockwise circle around the northern star when you're in the northern hemisphere. And and that circle, you can again, you can only see so far before you reach that vanishing point. So that's a tight circle 
with a strong, you know, a tight arc to it. And let's say you can see just maybe half of that circle before half of that distance before anything goes into the um, beyond the vanishing point. So when you go to the outer southern hemisphere, you now have the same circle, but it's a much bigger circle with a less severe arc. And you can still only see the same distance. Like if we could only see half from my pointer to my thumb, out here I'm only seeing just maybe a tenth of it or whatever the proportion is out of much less of a curve. So now that curve that the actual rotation around Polaris is so gentle that you might not even notice it. But then you add to it the rising and setting from vanishing point to vanishing point. That gives you another imaginary arc that you're seeing. And when you're standing in the outer southern hemisphere facing away from Polaris, you are now seeing the stars going in the opposite direction because of these combined motions, real motion and perceived motion. It's like if somebody draws a cube on a screen, you're like, oh, that's a cube. All three sides I'm seeing are, have, have four right angles in it, but none of those angles are right angles. Mm -hmm. It's your mind sees it differently. So if somebody can illustrate that, that I think will explain the apparent reversing of the stars in the Southern Hemisphere. Wow. Did I explain that all right? Yeah, 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 that's great. And, and I hope that... Um... Uh, Rory down in South Africa catches this because I, th I think he could probably illustrate it pretty quickly. There's other people out there that could do it too. Uh, if anyone, yeah, anyone's listening, please, by all means, see if you can get a, a rough three-dimensional rendering of that because that if, would be if, really, really cool. And anybody can reach me at um, through my website, Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, or, or just through my YouTube page, whatever. Um, if you want to discuss it further, I can, I can uh, explain it in a little more detail if you didn't get it. Well, thank you for telling us about that. I know you uh, came out with a video today, and it's our Flat Earthers Crazy Proof the Earth is a Ball to the Non-Critical Thinker. And tell us a little bit about that video. So I stayed up until probably 2 a.m. last night. I just can't. Oh, I, I, oh wait, wait. I'm sorry. I, do you have to go? Because maybe no, no, you don't no. have enough time to talk about this. No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just good. checking. I'm feeling very rejected here. No, 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 no. Just looking after you. And I just fell asleep, and then I woke up this morning, and uh, I was just like, what? I, I remembered that video. I saw it just before I fell asleep, and I looked at it, and um, I asked a friend to download it for me because it was only on Facebook. I couldn't find it on YouTube, and I made that video before I got out of bed to pay. <laughs> 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 Too much information, but I was like, I have to make this video, and I love it because it's one minute long. It's always my goal to make it one minute. And man, the trolls are going after me. Mostly the same guy with seven different accounts, but it's been crazy. Wow. Yeah, you've got uh, over a thousand views already, or a little bit more than that. So uh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, well, uh, I know you've got to go, so you know. I uh, actually thank have you for no being. Plan. <laughs> you, you, well, I mean, yeah, I know you, you already said that you had to go, so you know. All right. No. Oh, wait, right. No, I, I mean, going. no, that's fine. No, I mean, yeah, I Have mean, nice you said show. so, so, you know. Have a nice show. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. So you had to go. Hmm. Mark. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. had to go. Yeah, so. I see that. So, you know what we should talk about next? Hmm, what? Uh, so people f don't forget, and it's early in the show, and I find that people early in the show retain more stuff, and that is uh, your new logo. Oh, for, yes, please. For your YouTube video. I'm sorry, yeah. YouTube channel. On my YouTube channel, there is a section where there is a picture. I don't even know how to describe this. It's, it's back, a channel it's the, page the, backdrop. It's the channel background. Yeah, the backdrop. And um, it has to be a certain uh, uh, size. And I'm having a very hard time finding the right kind of picture. All the pictures that I've found don't really suit what I want the, to represent the channel. And so the sizing is weird. Don't you agree, Mark? Yeah, it's one of those weird things where you, it's, you don't see it very often, where it, most of the time it's, it's usually the file is too big. But with YouTube, it's actually too small. So but YouTube wants for their backdrop picture something that's like 2550 by 1400 resolution. And you know if you're trying to grab something just off of Google Images, a lot of those images aren't, aren't aren't that big yeah you could go to a wallpaper section and grab something that's that big but it's the chance of you grabbing exactly that what you want it in that resolution are pretty pretty slim so patricia is looking for go ahead pitch him 
Um, looking for something interesting, different, off the beaten track, cool, not black and white. Um, conspiracy be based. Conspiracy based, definitely having to do with the flat earth or NASA or space or movies from the past that had something to do with space or astronauts. But the size, uh, what was that size? Yeah, tw at least 25, let's say we'll round it, round it up. Let's say 2,600 by 1,400 or 2,550 by 1,440, something like that. A big, a pretty big resolution image. So okay. and, just, and as long as you make it big, she can, she can use it. All right. Fantastic. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Um, okay, so we've got um, Q&A enabled. Just click on the box with the nine squares, I think is what it was said, to get into Q&A. And then you'll be there and you can ask anything you want or make a statement. We have Justin Polo saying, what the hell was that all about, pertaining to David Wise? I don't know what's going on with David. Is, it, is there something going on between you two as far as, you know, there's some bad... Something bad happened? No, 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 no. You sure? Because it seemed huh? it seemed kind of awkward that that leaving. I, no, I no, he had he had to go. Hmm. All right. I don't know. It just felt awkward. <laughs> All right. Well, I that's just say. your opinion. It is. Just um, my, but it matters more than I don't know yours. So. Oh, ooh, them's fighting words. And <laughs> since I am an Anunnaki queen, that's just one more strike against you. Uh, you might be ejected as well next. <laughs> We've got a uh, <laughs> no fear. You've got a you've got a shield to protect yourself. Try throw whatever you got at me. Oh, trust me, I have this powers way beyond and cats. I have powers way beyond your wildest imagination. Oh boy. Um, dangerous to man. What a great name that is. Says, why did you push Wise off the show? <laughs> he said he did not have to go. <laughs> Maybe I should explain it. No, I no, I, I just think it's a little, it's a little awkward. I don't, I don't know what's going no, on. It's not no, necessarily it's my business, but you know, if you want to treat somebody that way because you're in some <laughs> sort of queen mode, that that's fine. It's totally cool. Uh, um, all right, uh, Matthew Eugene Rosa says, "Well, that wasn't awkward at all." <laughs> <laughs> Robin poses, you could look at the sun with a telescope with special filters. I remember doing this when I was a teenager and I didn't see any flares. Going back to our talk about the uh, the YouTuber suspicious observers. Yeah. Do you think fl solar flares are just completely made up? I, d I don't know. Now, I, how, how, I, I, think I, I think I told you that you have to revisit everything. Not just conspiracies, but even regular scientific observations, and because of where the data is coming from, if you, if all the solar information, if all those close-up shots of the sun are being with the with the solar flares and showing everything, if they're coming from NASA, including all those dark spots we see, you know, these giant dark triangles and crap like that, if they're coming from the sun, then um, then who's releasing the information? I mean, if it's if it's NASA, you can't trust it, or if it's any space agency, you can't trust it. So maybe maybe not. But people have seen, regular independent people with telescopes have seen um, sunspots on oh, the sun, I, I believe. Again, you know, the, the, just the general visual stuff. I mean, yeah, sunspots, yeah, of course, you can, you can see some of those. But the actual motion picture flares, maybe, maybe not. I mean, Eric Dollard believes in them, but it's still, you know, if, if, it's, if the sun is much, much smaller, then, you know, it still diminishes the whole process by it's huge huge amounts so mm. i don't think it really matters I, for you know if the sun if the sun is very very close then solar flares mean nothing now i mean they mean zip yeah and if the sun is very close which we believe yeah. and solar flares were happening we'd be being cooked right now and so I'll, I'll, I'll throw one more at you and that is those uh, movies that people you can find those on youtube where they said you know giant spaceship parks next to the sun and does weird things you know some mysterious object parks next to the sun well yeah if the sun is hundreds of thousands of miles in diameter then yeah that those spaceships would be huge but if the sun is only 30 miles in diameter eh, not that big a deal really hmm. just a, a regular old spaceship parking itself next to a you know the light it could be the maintenance team working on the light bulb as far as we know wow interesting Flat saying. Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, the Flatoween episode. I am an Anunnaki queen who um, is, uh, you know, um, exiled from my home planet. And I am here and involved with Starfleet. And we have uh, martial law. Martial and law. <laughs> it's Mark Sargent. Coming down and your street, house by house. Going to come for your guns. Come for your guns. Put you in a FEMA camp. <laughs> FEMA coffin. Oh, you're on the list. 
Guarantee it. You know, this actually, this headset actually works pretty well because it looks like a tactical headset. It now. does. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, next question here on Q&A. And by the way, enter Q&A. Click on the box with nine squares and you'll be in uh, here on YouTube. If you're listening to this live, if you're listening to this at a later date, well, sorry. But next time Mark is on, we will have Q&A. Other times chat is enabled in all the shows. Uh, on the topic of nukes, uh, writes Discworld D, which we had spoke of earlier. Uh, have either of you researched the possible hoax of nukes? Galen Windsor eating uranium on camera with a Geiger counter. Interesting stuff. Maybe they launched a bunch of TNT up into the atmosphere and de detonated it instead of nukes. And I have seen those videos, Mark. It's possible, of course. You know, there's there's several things you could you you could do here. One, the once the uranium uh, and plutonium is refined, maybe it has a shelf life like milk. To where you can't if you don't use it right away you don't get to use it uh, or maybe yeah maybe the, the weapons don't exist like we like we think they do however that being said radiation exists we know that much people that discovered uranium they died you know people that work with uranium like the, there's a reason why uh, they give you still to this day, uh, as far as I know, still give you a lead shield, you know, the lead blanket that you put on your when you're at the, the dentist's office. So we know the radiation exists. So the theory is sound. I believe in them. I know some people, you know, for, for anyone who has doubts, go watch the movie Trinity and Beyond hosted or I'm sorry, narrated by William Shatner, where the uh, one of the guys from Skywalker Ranch, special effects guys. Uh, cleaned up all the video from all the atomic tests that the you know, the government released. And some people say, oh, it's cartoonish. I was going, well, I don't think it's that cartoonish because you got to remember, we're talking about the late 40s, early 50s. Our special effects were not that good, even at the, the top echelon of Hollywood. Uh, and I know explosives, you know, what I do. And uh, it sure looked sure looked real to me. Now, were they, were they nuclear? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not, but at the very least, they were a very, very high form of explosives. Those ships, I mean, especially the ship test where they took all the, all the old Navy ships from, the, from Japan and Germany and they parked them in that harbor and they, they detonated that thing underwater. Uh, that, was, that was spectacular footage. You know, it was daytime footage, including water. And water, water special effects back then didn't even exist. So I believe it. There's That's many uh, videos out that say that nukes are a hoax. So I know. I, I, I've watched those videos and I've seen some of the, the, the footage that they show in those videos and it, it makes you really believe. And what was Galen Windsor doing? Faking it? The Geiger counter? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, for me though, remember it's a, it's a fairly minor point compared to everything else now. Because yeah. the whole flat earth concept, hence flat earth and other hot potatoes, has been gaining so much steam because it puts just about every other conspiracy, and I don't care which one you pick, it puts them on a whole, it, it takes them down to a second tier. It used to be top shelf, if you're talking about a bar, top shelf alcohol, top shelf used to be 9-11, JFK, Pearl Harbor, blah, blah, blah. Now, those are all down, and the top one with, with no rivals, as far as I can tell, is flat earth. So the nuke thing, I honestly don't worry about it anymore. All right. Next that's question just, just um, is, yeah, why did you push uh, David Weiss to leave? He clearly said that he could stay. He didn't have a plan. He may have said he couldn't stay long at first. Then he clearly decided to stay. Hey, <sighs> look, he's just. Oh, another question here. This one from deep inside the rabbit hole, which means it's from David Weiss. He writes, do you know where I can find some friends to hang out with that are into flat earth? <laughs> I hope people are beginning to get this at this point. David needs we'll new friends because we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Remember, it's Flatoween. There are tricks and there are treats. He can't sit at he can't sit at the cool the flat earth cool table right now at lunch. He just can't. <sighs> Thanks, Discworld D, for that question. He needs a better um, costume for that. <laughs> I like MS for Miss Steer or Mark Sargent. That's pretty brilliant that he came up with that mm. on his tinfoil hat. Yeah. Um or maybe it stood for something other than that. I don't know. Maybe he's Microsoft, a feminist. Micros Microsoft. Microsoft. Uh, the Egyptian. Er, the the airline international airline code for Egypt is MS. Or Mississippi. So. Uh, the old Doctor Who was Matt Smith. Um, Morley Schaefer, the newscaster. <laughs> <laughs> Schaefer. I win some points for bringing that up. I don't know what kind of points, but um. Let's see. Uh, we have another question or statement. This is from Nevermind, who says, Mark should position his camera below eye level for the intimidation factor. 
<laughs> below eye level. Oh, to do the to do, oh, you mean here? Hang on. Yeah, yeah. So, let's do so it. Like like I'll that. The next question. Is that uh, below eye level? So I guess that they're looking oh, up oh, at like you. Oh, like this, like that. Well, with yeah, squish down, like lower. Lower. No, I can't. You know what? I. Yeah, you know what? It's not gonna doesn't work. Doesn't matter. Yeah. No one's intimidated anyway, so no worries. Fine. <laughs> Urgh, coming for you. I'm scared. Martial law. <laughs> We're all Coming so down tight. the street in an armored car. Actually, this is a, this is honestly think about this, people. This is a brilliant escape plan. It is. <laughs> if there was martial law, I'm just going to put on the hat, put on my helmet, <laughs> walk out the <laughs> front door. No one is going to question me. I almost guarantee it. But you're going to have to crack some skulls, though. Well, you know, I'd all have to point. It's work. like get 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 those rabble rousers over there. Get those hippies. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, there's somebody there's somebody picketing on that corner, and it's like really. Plasma John Doe says we actually do have martial rules since 1863, a.k.a. the Lieber Code. That's beyond my level of knowledge. Fine, fine. But we're talking, we're talking about actually in the street, dedicated curfew. It's not really martial law until, until there's a curfew. But yes, martial code, fine. All right. Yeah, well, that's good because I didn't know that in the, uh, the Lieber thing. I didn't know that either. I'm going to have to look that up later. Look, don't take away from my costume. <laughs> I'm going to take away from your costume right now because I got this. Uh, and it's way cooler than anything you have. Whatever. I got Look, I got this thing spins. I, I got the anti-protester helmet. How cool That's is that? That's nothing. It's you cool. See this thing? Okay. This is quality. It's got reinforced bars on it. Seriously, yeah. I was I was actually going to put this thing on and and let somebody hit me over the head with it. Wait a minute. <laughs> that could be our next show. <laughs> I think there'll probably be some volunteers. Some if some infamous uh, main flat earthers might step up. <laughs> I might no. get them on my show after all. <laughs> Matt, like Boylan hits Mark, Matt Boylan hits Mark with a two by four. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Discworld D says MS on David Weiss's tinfoil hat was to keep mainstream out, hence the tinfoil sheeting and his shielding in his opinion. Possibly. Nice. Nice. Uh, Oh, Domicia Williams says, I think Patricia prematurely wanted David Weiss to go so she can be alone with Mark. Wow. That's, that's rather flattering. Uh, but I don't think that's it. I, I, I disagree. I think that something... Next question. Patricia and David what just... Is, <laughs> what is the first thing you say to people to introduce them to Flat Earth? It's a what big shock. Flat? So, what, oh, something quick to make them zing to catch interest. That's by Eric Blair. You, depending on the audience, what you do is you play play the devil's advocate. Play the card of, hey, I just heard the nuttiest thing from some crazy people that the earth is flat. Can you believe that BS? Holy smokes, right? And then show them a video, right? Kind of suck them in. And while they're waiting to laugh, that's when, you know, all you have to do is, again, stick the seed in their head and uh, watch it grow because once it's in their head, that's it. I think I, I told, said this last night, we'll have to talk about the interview last night if we get a chance, where um, once it gets in your head, you have to resolve it one way or the other. And that is you either have to deal with it from, you'll either have to deny it entirely and say, you know what, I'm not even gonna look at this topic anymore, or you have to resolve it as being true or not true in, in your mind. And most people can't get past the, the, the questions that are too difficult for science to answer. What about people who are just, they, no matter what you show them and what you tell them and to what length you go to explain it to them logically and in, with videos and um, using um, experiments that you can show them right in front of them, they just simply won't. What, what? Oh, you mean like Neil deGrasse Tyson? Well, yeah. he has a vested interest because of his, his job and he's probably, people, but I just mean a regular person who has no well, vest, vested well, interest. No, I'll give you a perfect example and that is my sister. You know, she uh, she grew up the same same household as me, and and uh, lives on the, you know, the same island as me. And she doesn't believe in anything. She doesn't believe in any conspiracies. But it's it's more than that. She just doesn't want to deal with it, because you know, for for a lot of people, it's like, look, my life is already stressful enough. The last thing I want to I want to look at is anything conspiracy. It's not that they believe everything the government tells them, because that's silly. Nobody believes everything that what, what you hear in mass media and what the government releases is gospel but 
there's nothing there's not much you can you can do for those people right away if they're in denial they're in denial they will not look at it until everybody else looks at it so it's gonna have to be that hundredth monkey effect where everybody else is talking about it so finally they have to acknowledge some people you're just not gonna be able to get through to sorry you're just not gonna be able to do it fair enough this is Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, the Flatoween episode. I am your, for this evening, Anunnaki Queen, exiled from her home planet and now working for Starfleet. And the man whose back is now to the camera. I'm Marshall no Law. I'm going to look up. I'm going to start adding people to the FEMA list, just like <laughs> uh, our friend, uh, Lord Stephen. Yes, exactly. Uh, and this is, did I say episode 25? If I did not, I just did. And I want everyone to notice my ring. Very Anunnaki Queen, if you know. Yes. Yeah. It's the kind of ring where you say to your subjects, kiss the ring. Next. You had to throw that in there, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Nice. Uh, next question from Nathan Oakley, 1980. Why is the sky blue? It's the kind of question that children ask their parents, and the parents usually can't answer it. They say it's, it's water being reflected, and that never went over on me as a child. I always thought, but there's areas where there's no water anywhere, but the sky's still blue. Like if you're in the desert. All right, I have there's there's two. I have two two of my favorites. All right, I've got one as well. So you go first. Okay, my oh really? I don't want to steal yours. Then go ahead. Oh well, um, uh, uh, Robin Poe, who was my guest. Oh, I shouldn't say that because she said she wanted to remain anonymous. Uh, <laughs> nice. Why don't you give out her social security number while you're at it? Oh nice. no. Well, nice my go guest on there. On the previous <laughs> I'm not going to ever reveal my sources. <laughs> oh. She's fine. I'm sure she's fine because she's no longer in the army, and uh, she hasn't messaged me. Why did you say that yet here? Uh, no. Oh no! I'm ruined. <laughs> she's I'm commenting. coming for you, dear. <laughs> she's commenting as Robin Poe, and I would, you know, wanted to give her credit for being a guest on my show, uh, two shows back. Anyway, she believes that um, there's uh, sort of, I guess, sapphires are w part of what the dome is made out of, and that's why we have the blue color and there's way more to what she believes than that but that's the that's the thumbnail version so go ahead with your two well that's pretty romantic it is sapphires. nice i love sapphires i that's like kinda, that blue yeah, that's kind of neat i mean it's not as as i mean it's cooler than what i was going to say i i had somebody say that well you know maybe it's it's literally ice you know that uh when you go out to, when you go down to the 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 deep sea the icebergs are actually colored blue you know the ice is a blue color it's very similar to the the shade of a blue sky that's not my favorite though my favorite is it's blue because that's what color they set it to when they set the projection system up and that is at night it's black with stars you twinkle and you set the twinkling rate and during the daytime it's blue in fact if you go into the really old legends before you know you guys can look this up where they talked about a time before there was a sun and a moon like during the first versions of this there was no when there was no sun and the moon the sky was just shades of light, basically. It wasn't. It was just shades. You know, it was light blue, and then it got darker, and then that was it. There was no. There was no sun tracking in the sky. No. So no moon. So for me, no. It's blue because it's set to blue. Plain and simple. When you're inside a planetarium, uh, what what color is Jupiter? Well, it's whatever color they set it to because it's artificial. Hmm. That's what you're looking at. That's me. Why a long time ago uh, were we told as children that it's reflecting water? Um, is there a better a mainstream explanation for why the sky is blue? I'm sure there is. Well, I never, I've never heard that explanation. If you were taught that, I, you probably didn't go to as good school as me. No, so. <laughs> not a school thing. I think it's just when you ask your parents and they don't really know the answer and you're really young and they make it up. And then when you're older, you just buy into whatever you're told and don't pay any mind. So maybe my parents were lying to me and... Maybe my entire life is a sham. Oh, man. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're, again, fishing for the sympathy from, from the crowd wearing the outfit you're, you're, you're wearing. I'm yeah, not going to be so much. People are, right, probably wondering, people are probably wondering, is that necklace actually real? Well, it's really cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. LT Gold 007 says, if you've seen the video that clearly shows the moon from the States when it is over Australia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, um, uh, the that, that rocket, amateur rocket shot that was sent up like 70-something miles. 
Mm-hmm. And it was like that one frame and that one guy dissected it. And as it was spinning, he was looking at the horizon, but then he caught like a frame or two of the moon. And he's yes. going, why, why can we see the moon there? He, he, he broke it down and said, the moon should be on this day and this time over Australia. There's no way you should see the moon, which is, could be why the night weather, light, night weather balloon launches are forbidden. Yes. <clears throat> Yes, that is exactly why. Now, I, I, that's the real reason why, but what they say, the, the, the reason that they give us, the mainstream reason is something along the lines of it could interfere with air traffic or something like yeah, that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because um, during the daytime, it's not going to. Please. Right. And, and birds can interfere fear with airplanes, of course. And on a routine like basis, yeah. Exactly. Paul R. says, I've been, this is a good question for you because uh, of who you've had on your shows. Uh, Mm -hmm. Paul R. says, I've been watching some videos on gyroscopes recently and it's made me wonder, do you think the stars are revolving over the flat earth or do you think the flat earth is a spinning gyroscope under the stars? No, I think the stars are are moving. It's again, treated no different than you would an actual planetarium. You don't, you don't have to get tricky and make the, the lower section any sort of movement. Uh, based mechanism, uh, keeping because you you'd be messing with a lot of gravity. A lot of people have said, "Well, you know, could it be that the flat Earth is actually spinning like a merry-go-round?" I said, "No, no, no. You don't ever want to do that because as you would get further and further out, the G forces, the side G forces, would would start to come into play, and it would actually be measurable." Yeah, uh, like a merry-go-round. The people at the outside, if there were any people, but I guess it would be Antarctica. Yeah, but anything so, there would be pushed to the side. Yeah, but. But wait so a minute, no, no, the, the ice wall's on the side. Maybe it's water that's been pushed to the side and then froze. Well, I mean, it could. You could have done it when, yeah, when you created the ice wall yeah. or you know the coastline of Antarctica. Yeah, you could have done something like that, but not. You do that before you introduce the civilization. Right. You, that's you know an mean? interesting thought. It was just set to spin, and then it's when it stopped, and those out, outer areas were cold, and then when it stopped, that's where it was, and sure. uh, we had. That's kind of an, that's and, kind and, of. And, yeah, and a convenient way to move the oceans around. Yeah. You know, if you want to change the tectonics, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if the creator can just do something by just, I mean, it would be absolutely nothing to do any of these things. No. So, all right, um, Q&A is enabled. So if you'd like to ask a question or make a statement, tell us what you're doing tonight for Flatoween. That would be fantastic. It's Mark Sargent and I'm Patricia Steer. And this is episode n- number 25 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And uh, our uh, our YouTube user, Wenda Shift one when the shit hits the fan, sorry. Ooh, I just swore. <laughs> really? You're, you're blaspheming on your show? Fantastic. You just lost about half your church listeners. <laughs> just didn't then. mean to. Was just I, I actually have. I'm sorry. I don't want to distract you from the question. Yes. Um, well, you probably should have because this is the question. I hear Justin Bieber is a flat earther. Is this true? If it is, that somebody would be great. Tra- yeah, somebody track that guy down. Because eventually, that's what we're going to need. We're going to need somebody that has a lot of followers, even if they're shallow followers. I make fun of Justin Bieber, well, because he deserves it. But the other, the other person I really wanted to to kind of get involved with this, because there's very, very few celebrities or even pseudo celebrities that are into conspiracy teams. I mean, Dan Aykroyd's good, um, but you know who one is is um, uh, Kylie Jenner. Yeah, you mentioned that before the youngest Jenner daughter, she came out and said a couple things about chemtrails and stuff like that. She's got, what, a couple million followers on, on Twitter? Yeah. If she just tweeted, even even if you have them tweet a negative comment, it's going to generate a ton of press, which is, I can't believe these flat earthers are serious. If they just do that, then they're off the hook. You know, they don't even have to get on board with it, but a lot of people look into it. And if they, you know, even better if they set a link, you know, to whoever. It's like, you know, twa- flat earthers are, are dumb, right? And then put a link to flat earth clues. Oh, it'd be a godsend uh, for what we're doing right now. Yeah, and I, I know when you mentioned this on a previous uh, episode, people had responded in the comments, well, why would we want somebody like that? You know, Kylie Jenner, that's nobody, uh, you know, that wouldn't be a good spokesperson for Flat Earth, but that's not the reason. No, that's not the reason. It's not that you want them on the on board, on the, on the bandwagon with Flat Earth. You just want them talking about it. Even if they're not on board, it, it, the exposure is just way too valuable. Yeah, it could be anybody who has a lot of followers on Twitter, anybody famous. It doesn't really matter who they are if they're, you know, yeah. d- just get it yeah. out there. Yeah, Justin Bieber, if, if somebody, yeah, somebody send, somebody tweet Justin Bieber and say, hey, look, make fun of Flat Earth. I think it'd be a real hoot. That's a great idea. Or not just Justin Bieber, 
Anybody. anybody. Yeah, anybody. yeah. If anybody has a celebrity, anybody knows, you know, some degree of separation. You know somebody who knows somebody that has a celebrity friend. Tell them, you know, go the other way. And that is don't make them look at Flat Earth. Have them try to make fun of it. Because, again, that's also a great, great tactic of getting the seed in their head. Well, we've got Q&A going on, and uh, I'm going to try to get to as many questions as I can here on Flatoween. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Perceptions Talk Radio, it sent just a comment, which is nice. Happy Halloween, you two, with a winky face. Aw. Oh, that's, that's nice. nice. Who's, who is who is that Perceptions guy? He's a real Fruit Loop. Yeah, um, what's his name? What's his John, name? Jame, Jame, Jameson. Jennifer. Um, uh, uh, Jorge. Um, uh, oh, jo John. Johnny. John. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> his name is his name is Jonathan, John. and he is the I'm host so of, of Perceptions, <laughs> uh, and he does a great great job with his show, and he is also the wingman on my show. Right. And uh, thank you, thank you for for not giving us too hard a time in the comments section. And uh, he, you can watch his shows. You put them on your channel, so or not watch yeah. them. You can listen to them. Yeah, he's and also got his own channel. Uh, yes, you can watch his stuff on. So right, exactly. Yeah. So both. Um, next comment is from Matthew Eugene Rosa. Has Mark looked seriously into setting up a flat Earth convention in Vegas or maybe Antarctica for 2016? I know many of us would be up for it. I, think I know Jaron was kind of talking about something like that. I think it's inevitable that we that we do some sort of convention. Sure. Uh, I mean, again, we're only in it eight months, going on nine months, because what tomorrow is um, November. So, yeah, it's yeah, sometime early next year or mid. I don't know. It, whenever it happens, somebody somebody else is going to have to try to organize it. Uh, but it's if the demand is there, you bet I'll, I'll I'll go. You, I would be happy to sit down and and you know try to get this thing more exposure and, and concentrate the thought processes. You bet. If, if there were such a thing, I would. And how cool go. is that, by the way, that we're even talking about that? Yes. When, exactly. When's a flat Earth convention coming down the road? It's like, what? I mean, that that should scare astrophysicists to death. Neil deGrasse Tyson would be like, oh, man. I well, there's enough people that would definitely go. I mean, I'm no fan of Vegas. Sorry for any of uh, those uh, watching and listening who live in Vegas. And I've been several times. Um, but I'm not a fan of Vegas. But I would definitely go. Um, you know, just because it would be, be, hey, mixing and mingling with flat earthers. It would be so fun. Yeah. Everyone would just immediately like each other. Yeah, yeah, because it wouldn't because a flat Earth convention wouldn't be dark and sinister like other conventions, where it's like, oh, you know, you know, we're we're talking in low tones about how the the government's screwing us here and there because there's the the bulk of the flat Earth movement is really positive and yes. it's really life changing. Every single day, I get emails that tell how people's lives are just been split wide open, and they uh, they just they just completely dig in what's what's happening here. It's it's a positive thing. Yeah, it's really a positive thing, and. If you went to such a convention, like I said, everybody would be your friend. Everybody would would you feel like a bond, an instant bond with everybody, because that one thing, the kind of one of the most important parts of your life, although it's a new part of your life that you can't really share with maybe your entire family or your friends or coworkers. Everybody there is on the same page. You don't have to leave certain things out of your conversation. You yeah. can just talk freely. So yep. it would, would be great. Someday yep. the whole world will be flat earthers. Yeah got to happen it's going to happen we're going to make it happen all of us we're going to make we're doing. it happen that's why we're doing this yeah um yeah and somebody would say oh you know my little channel what are you going to do but you know what my little channel and all the other little channels make one big army and we're we're marshalling martial law we're martial marshalling law. an army we're all an army and a good army not a bad army so yep yeah um Let's see. Robin Poe says, being new to the flat earth, one of the things that impresses me is that flat earthers are out there doing all kinds of experiments and observations. They're not relying on media or internet. That's how the truth gets out. Yeah. That's yeah. True. And the, the, the greatest thing about the flat earth, the greatest thing about the flat earth is you're living in it. You're walking on it every day. So the experiments you can do, you can go, go down to the, the nearest body of water. Uh, grab some in instruments. Just start doing tests for yourself. Do the moonlight test. Do the do the curvature test. Uh, there's so many cool little things. The weather balloon test. Depending on how much money you have and and the time you have, you can all go out and do. You can prove it for yourself. That's the best part. You don't have to read it somewhere. You can literally just go somewhere, set up. You know, and not everybody's got science in their blood but you can figure it out and you don't even have to reinvent the wheel. You can look at what other people have done and see their videos and say, okay, we've done this, 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 and this, what else can we do? 
and it's everything helps. Nothing yeah, is and even I'd like wasted. to do the moonlight test. I'm not an experimenter, and I've never claimed to be an experimenter, but I've watched many experiments. I'm more of a uh, information conduit, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I would definitely do the moonlight test. I find that one very interesting because for many people doing it, uh, John Lebon said his results were inconclusive. Yeah. Um, and he said perhaps it was the type of uh, thermometers that he used. He I like really think that ones. was basically it. Right. Yeah. And other the, people the, have had good luck with it. The the test that I want to see is the uh, night vision on the Chicago skyline, oh, you know, yeah. some, some sort of infrared because it's, it's tough because you got to be able to film it. So you're going to have to get a night vision thing and, and, and figure out how to attach it. And there's way, there's ways to do it. In fact, if anyone wants to do a night vision where you're looking at a city across a body of water, you're not, shouldn't be able to see it. And you want to know how to hook it up to a camera, look at, uh, there's a YouTube guy called UFO Lou which he does some really great stuff. Not only that, he can build his own night vision. He breaks it down in videos on on what you can do if you're on a budget. So check that out when you get a chance. Well, UFO Lou should be doing that test. He should, <laughs> but he's more into, you know, once you start looking at UFOs, you UFOs. tend to get a little, yeah. you tend to get drawn down that path and and maybe he will one day. But right mm -hmm. now he's, he's focused on the spaceships, which is still, that's still cool, fine. Like well, it. you've got night vision. I've got night vision. That's true. Uh, Time for a road trip, although we don't know how to hook up a camera to it. That's yeah, probably... and the night vision that we have is not something you could hook up to a camera real easy. You oh, have to yeah. get like a like a night vision monocular. And, oh, and, uh, I almost I had a monocular. Yes, I ordered did. a monocular, yes. and then I sent it back because you told me that you need. Uh, yes. So, see, I could have already had that experiment under my belt. It's all your fault. Because <laughs> I control your every move? Oh, come on. Who's, who's wearing the queen outfit and who's in the foot soldier outfit? Exactly. As it should be. Oh, boy. Um, it's Flatoween, and that's why we look like the way we do. But the way we act is just the way we always do. <laughs> yes, but say, this is not that. Honestly, here's, here's the difference, people. She's, well, actually... Her dressing up like a queen is not that much of a costume, and this isn't a costume for me. I actually, I'm just going to put this back in the in one of the cases and save it for the uh, for the real martial law, and then break it out. And uh, while well, everybody else is getting rounded up for FEMA camps, I'll just be kind of walking around. Hey, gonna get a donut. Be back. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. So uh, please join in chat and just click on the box with the nine boxes, I think is what it is. And then you'll be able to enter and ask a question, make a statement, whatever you'd like to say. Uh, Jay White says, let's have a challenge with Neil and Bill Nye. What Bring them on. Oh, a Bring challenge them on. with you. Oh, oh, Bring, that would be great. Give me an entire panel at this point. Give me, give me five of your best astrophysicists, put them on a table across from me. And I'll even let them go first. I'll give them like the first 20 minutes. And uh, and when they run Let's out of make up a, a fake panel right now of people that we'd like to have against some of the people like, you know, uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, uh, Neil Disgrace Tyson and and others we will just say and others. So imagine there's a big panel of those. Who are we going to put on the team? Yes. We're going to have you. I'm going to vote for Jaron to be on there. And uh, insanity is sanity. And I want star there's, gods. We need that. Take your take your on. pick. You can you will you will not be able to think of them all because there's too many people that know the know the drill now to where they could go in. Yeah, it's, it may not be perfect, but just about anybody that's been doing video, anybody that's been doing videos in the flat earth has a shot. Rory is, Cooper would be great. Rory Cooper would be great. You need uh, people uh, who have all different aspects, like puzzle pieces to fit together the perfect team. Uh, well, I don't think there is a perfect team right now because there's too many little aspects that are still being developed as we speak. I mean, who knows? Somebody may come out tomorrow that is really, you know, puts together like the perfect video. And then it's like, okay, well then let's throw that guy out there. Um, but it's a moot point. Ooh, not Mr. Moot. It is a moot <laughs> point. We'd have Mr. Moot too, because he's awesome. I should have, you know, I was thinking actually putting on the helmet and then actually saying, you know, it is I, Mr. Moot. <laughs> Patricia Steer, you know, but no one would, I think I would believe that. So, yeah. well, uh, you know, people were accusing Mr. You of being Mr. Moot. So, you know, conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. No, I'm not. I don't have a single tattoo on my body and that guy runs a tattoo shop. Right. So not Mr. Me. Moot is fantastic. And people who didn't like the Mr. Moot show just need to, um, you know, go somewhere else because this show is about talking to all the different flat earthers and he is one of them and he yeah. has a very good subscription base and he comes at it from a Christian perspective and he's yeah. really nice yeah. and he's doing something totally different. Hey, I mean, that's what the creative aspect of flat earth. That's one of the things that's attractive about it. Thinking outside the box.
Agreed. Um, the, oh, I'm sorry, can I answer that question? That would be that you were, can you say yeah, Bill Nye, question? yes. Uh, yeah, yes. well, here, here's the problem with that. The, you're never going to get that debate. And the reason is, is because it's too high profile. That's why they can't even really feel out. They're, they're sort of kind of feeling the edges right now with that guy that uh, went on um, Art Bell's show. He was, you know, like a second tier astrophysicist. I mean, yeah, he, he, he speaks well enough. Quote, unquote, working way below his pay grade. Uh, Art kept saying that to try to make the astrophysicist appear like to be some incredible intellect compared to the Morgyle, which is completely untrue and just yeah. made me so angry when I heard it. I agree. But they can't they can't do a panel like that because they don't have enough ammunition. It's not just it's not enough to have them sit across a table. They've got to have something to throw at us. And they don't. They, and they're in trouble. There's too many really, really big questions that cannot be answered. And they don't they don't know. And these are questions that are that, that the public can really grasp, you know, that, that we have on our side. Whereas the only thing they're going to try to do is say, well, you know, you take it into you, they're going to try to do curvature or they're going to try to do gravity or they're going to do the Coriolis effect or meteors or something like that, where they're going to throw a lot of math in and they're going to lose the, the common the common listener. So they can't do it. They just can't. I wish they would, but they can't. The, the, you'll know if they start getting close because they'll do more radio shows. Neil deGrasse Tyson, I don't know if he actually talked about it. I don't think he did on that show when he was on yeah. our bell the other night. Yeah. It's the fact that he hasn't talked about it, even though you lit up the comments like a Christmas tree, you and your friends, uh, you know, posted all these things about, you know, that NASA's a fake and Art Bell should come clean and, uh, and Neil deGrasse should come clean. He still wouldn't address it. Even though I'm sure the Art Bell's producers say, hey, you want to talk about this? He's going, no, no, we don't want to talk about this. Thanks so. to everybody who participated in that truth bomb, by the way. It was yeah, really yeah, truth bombs. They're great. You don't have to have a special day to do it. Just find out when an astrophysicist is going to talk to somebody. And really, there's only two high-profile guys that anyone knows. It's Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye. And Listen. everybody, all the Flat Earthers' comments in that were very respectful and intelligent. It yeah. shows me, once again, that when we have those people who are troll slash ball earthers not just people that believe we live on a ball because they don't know and they don't have the information but the kind that are vulgar and mean and nasty um that's uh you know flat earthers aren't like that i we, i just they're just smart kind people who are trying to get the word out and i respect everybody agreed we say we make some very intelligent comments you don't see us going around saying round earthers you're dumb you know we we don't go down that road Exactly. In fact, I, in fact, every, I'm, I'm getting sort of a habit now of if I see somebody that goes out of their way to make a YouTube video, that's, that's, you know, that flat earthers are dumb. Basically, that's the only opening they've got. I come and you see me, I put a comment saying, look, you know, that's their for the, that this response is absolutely what I expect. Give it time. The fact that he's making a video about it, he or she means that it's in their head and sooner or later, there's a chance that they're going to come around and be on our side anyway. So every time I see an anti-flat earther, I just smile. And I say it's a, it's a ticking time bomb in their head. Yeah, they're a future flat earther. They're a baby flat earther. They just don't know it yet. Huh? <laughs> All right, we've got another uh, question. And by the way, Q&A is open, not chat this time. Chat's enabled on every one of my videos except when it's Mark and I. And Mark and I don't do an interview show. It's, we're not even really co-hosts. We're just doing a show. And this is the flat Halloween show. Once a week we do a show, but I just do this is, out of pity, really. Yeah, well, who should really be pitied? The foot soldier or the queen? All right, we've got Jade <laughs> Ferris. <laughs> Gotta play the role. Jade Ferris asking a question here in QA. And it's hi guys, 7 a.m. Sunday here in West Oz. Uh, of course, she's in Australia, uh, crocheting, listening to this and trying to think of a question, <laughs> smiley face. I've been doing my bit to spread the f flat earth world, found that the kids and teens are the most open, which would make sense. Sure. Why wouldn't they? Uh, kids are open-minded. Again, that's why the conditioning of the globe earth works so well, because you're indoctrinated at a young, young age when kids, we, as children, we're all, we've all been there. We don't think that people will lie to us. I was one of the last people. I mean, I actually made it really all the way through high school into like my second year of college before I even understood that that the, the power elite actually might have motivation to lie to the public. Never, never even occurred to me. I didn't even know what a conspiracy was until I watched JFK in the theater back in the 90s, in the early 90s. That never. must have hit you hard. It did. Were you, were you shell-shocked when you walked out? Well, yeah, because it's like, wait, how, how did, it, you know, like anything. But you could have just said, oh, it's just a movie. 
No, because it was done very, very well. Right. And uh, the it real wasn't... footage and the made up footage seamlessly melded together. Yeah, it was Oliver, Oliver Stone almost got himself into some big trouble doing that. But it was very, very well done. And at that point, I, I, I immediately became suspicious of everything. And but but I, I like most people, you know, had to it, it was stages. I had to let go of things, which is why the flat earth is so difficult, because you have to let go of everything. You have to let go of the entire space program, the Cold War, the space race, uh, uh, anything involving astronomy and astrophysics, uh, all your physical sciences, everything you've got to look at differently. Uh, anyway, it, the, it changes the entire thing. And yeah. uh, it's it's you know, on, your in a viewpoint, great on your viewpoint in many ways about whether you choose to call it God or a creator or creators or whatever thing you think made this place, you might go from being an atheist or agnostic to thinking, well, this didn't just happen with the Big Bang. So it will change your worldview for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a statement here uh, from Robin Poe that says, uh, Bill Nye isn't a scientist, he's a mechanical engineer. And I didn't know that because of Bill Nye the science guy. Sure. Didn't know, didn't know. Sure. Um, and a continuation of that statement. Oh, I just lost it, but it was, I'll get it back in a minute. I hate okay. when that happens. Um, Paul R says, do you think that the White House, St. Paul's Dome on the Rock and other domed buildings are symbolic representations of the flat earth with a firmament over the top? I do. Yes. I, I have no doubt that, because a lot of those structures were built by who? Uh, Masons. Oh, I was going to say the Anunnaki, just because that's on my mind right now. Uh, really? I was looking. Take, I was looking at the Q and A and wasn't listening to you. So. You're going to take credit for building those structures. Oh, you weren't <laughs> listening. That's fantastic. Last no, no, I, I was, but uh, I was just yeah, trying to. Yeah, I'm not doing the show anymore. I kick, need to have a. Why don't you just kick me off like you did, David? I didn't kick him off. He had to go. Oh, whatever. The uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. The the Masons were involved in most of the capital uh, yes. structures, and they built all the major buildings. And at the highest levels, and I mean the really really high levels, they know they know that this is not what the world isn't what we think it is. It's an enclosed structure, and and they absolutely know. If you, anyone has any doubts, look up the Masonic tracing boards. There's only five of them, and uh, they're fairly easy to understand understand once you stare at them long enough. Okay. Another question here in Q and A, and feel free to chime in. We're trying to rip through these questions this time. You and I get bogged down in senseless chitter chatter sometimes. And so, chitter chatter. Yes. <laughs> we just we just wung that chatter around. Yeah, we certainly wung it, and we wung it well. Wung is a past tense of to wing something. It's not a real word, but it <laughs> should not be. Not a real word. But it should be. <laughs> I wung it. Patricia Does Steer make makes up words. Somebody make Why? a video about that. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, Fake flat earth. Words. <laughs> Why? <Yeah. laughs> flat earth doesn't feel like a dark, deep conspiracy that you, you don't really talk about, like alien abductions, 9 11, etc. Flat earth feels positive, like a real research community. That from Eric Blair, and indeed true. Yeah, yeah. I, I see almost no, I mean, yeah, it's negative in the sense that, yeah, NASA defrauded the, the American public out of a trillion dollars. Um, but and yeah, I'm sure people have died in, in the process keeping this thing a secret. But the the bigger picture here is that this thing is bigger than they are. It's bigger than the people that are trying to cover it up. It's only been really covered up for the last 60 years. Before that, for the se several thousand years before that, it was just part of the creation process. So uh, yeah, I don't see it dark and, and really gloomy at all. I think it's a, it's a chance for something new and wonderful. A new golden age. Potentially. Definitely, yes. Um, Israel Adams, who is really wonderful, uh, I speak with him on Facebook, says, rage against the machine members are flat earthers. I didn't know that. Would not surprise me. Some of their songs are so conspiracy-based. But the question is how long they've been flat earthers. And, right. and I don't know if they're still touring or anything. They might be, actually. Um, somebody sent them a tweet saying, hey, yes. if you guys were, in fact, I may look up some of their lyrics. Uh, but yeah, somebody track them down and say, look, Flat Earth thing's firing up again. Better get on it. Sounds cool. Universal Freedom Network says, I'll look into some convention possibilities since I'm here in Vegas. I've emceed a few in the past, and that is from Jim. Mm, right so on. perfect. We need someone who is in the area probably would be easier to get yeah. everything done. I mean, everything could be done online these days, but yeah, that's fantastic, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy, not Jim. 
I don't know why my glasses. Yeah, if anyone are... wants to go and peddle their flat earth wares like frisbees or books or. Oh, that's right. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, we need we need more flat earth mer merchandise anyway. That's true. Well, and Stinky I, Cash had that video about um, well, a, a, like a flat earth clock kind of in a way. Oh, he had that keychain too, didn't? No, not Stinky no, Cash. That's, that, was, uh, that was Wakey Wakey. Wakey Wakey and Matrix Decode. Yeah. And flat earth rebel outpost, which you need to subscribe to if you haven't already. It's so stinky, funny. Stinky, stinky Cash had a clock. Yeah, uh, one of his more recent, he does a lot of videos, one of his more recent videos, and it came sort of from the Back to the Future clock, uh, that was a Flat Earth clock, that video, and then it, yeah. so it, it really explains how, how the moon works. So Yeah, what, again, why was there a Flat Earth clock in the beginning of the, the opening credits of Back to the Future from 1985? Why was that there? It's yeah. wild. Yeah. Um, Stinky Cash is going to be my guest uh, here on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes in the future. We've got him booked in, and I'm trying to look up the date really quick right now while I'm here, and I can't find it, but it doesn't really matter because I will let you know uh, as we get closer to that date. So um, that'll be neat. Oh, I got it. Saturday the 14th at 5 Central Time. Saturday the 14th. So that'll be fun. Right on. Um, so thank you, Universal Freedom Network and Jimmy for that question. And uh, oh, the question that I lost has now been recovered, which is in the last week, there have been a lot of space related items in the mainstream news. Are we making them nervous? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. In fact, you could you could you could probably answer part of that, which is, yeah, they are dancing to our music right now. No question, they are making moves, and that is so flattering from a from a conspiracy standpoint. The fact that they're making moves because of what's what's been coming out over the last eight nine months, uh, you know, the biggest being the uh, the new Earth picture that they announced. You know, first Earth picture in forty three years. In right. fact, it's the, the, the the, the, only the second Earth picture in 43 years, and they still, you know, had to take a shot with the, the upside down sex thing. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, many it's all... in the mainstream will say that this is just what NASA does. They're about exploration. They're about new discoveries, mm -hmm. and so of course they're going to put out new information. But not, not to this a, degree. Not, this is yeah, definitely a this... chess game. Yeah, Let yeah. Earthers say yeah. this. We'll do this. Yeah, they are moving pieces way quicker than expected. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, the pace at which they're releasing stories. Now I was kidding, you know, like a month ago. And I said, well, it's like, it's like every couple of days. No, now it's like every day there's multiple stories because it's the only one of their only moves they can do is release as many NASA stories as they can to reinforce the globe. But the other move they can do is to tie any crazy stories, any, any, any crazy idea, tie it to the flat earth. <clears throat> so if you believe in, you know, if you don't believe in climate change, then you believe in the flat earth. If you don't believe in, uh, you know, you have an archaic religious belief, you also believe in flat earth. They're going to try to do that. It's always going to be tied to that now. You'll see in more and more of it. Uh, but it's going to backfire because lots of people, again, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say this, it's like shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire. It seems like it's doing something, but all it's doing is making it bigger. Right. That's why anybody who comes out with a video uh, and they have a channel with a bunch of subscribers and they're anti-flat earth and they make an anti-flat earth video, well, guess what? You've just opened up all of your subscribers to the flat earth. And many will laugh along with you and say flat earthers are stupid, but many will say, what's this flat earth thing? Next, yeah. you know, they're flat earthers. So yeah. continue doing those videos, anti-flat earth Yeah, videos. please. By all means. Even yeah. anti-YouTuber uh, videos, many people on YouTube, many people have had videos made about them saying that they're bad people or trying to expose them um, and yet they still stay and they're still doing their videos. Those videos don't do anything either. Maybe a few people will believe some of the allegations but they're usually very specious. And what really happens is it drives people who never knew about that YouTuber before to go to that channel and there's a 50% odds they'll like what that person is saying and then become a subscriber. Yeah. And make their make them more popular or not yeah. popular but make what they're talking about more more seen so yeah, it's it's almost a foolproof plan actually the way it's yeah. been going how, how can you how can you defeat something like this you it's, can't because uh, it's the truth and truth yeah. is undefeatable yeah people start, even, people even with martial law <laughs> <laughs> coming for you the um yeah because it, people are suckers for the truth they if something rings true and that's what I get more often than not, uh, you know, like eight to one, nine to one in my emails, people saying, you know what, I'm buying it. I'm in. Uh, because if you look at it, if you look at it close enough, <clears throat> the globe, which should have huge, overwhelming amounts of evidence right now, they don't. 
And you got to ask yourself why. 500 years? Really? No arguments? You're not pushing back on this? It's 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 a tough thing. And the astrophysicists are scared. I know I, it's a fairly small community. And they're probably watching some of this stuff and getting a little worried. But none of them, even if they believe it, they can't come out and say it. Because the second they do, their career is over. So I'm hoping that maybe a retired astrophysicist, a radio telescope operator, an astronomer, somebody contact me about this. I've got all the, the you know, some of the major ones. I'm still working on others, but by all means, you know, track us down. And if it's not me, track Patricia down. Track anybody down. We'll talk to you. On Monday, November 2nd, Daniel Pratt is going to be my guest on oh, uh, Flat fun. Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And he hammers NASA. Uh, yeah. He's been doing these daily videos where he's saying something along the lines of, you know, NASA, you know, why, dear NASA, why don't you have, uh, you know, something on the moon with a 24-hour camera showing Earth? Oh. You know, and, and he, the, the videos are great. And his, he's just, you know, sitting in a plain room, talking directly to the camera, just letting all of his emotions flow freely. And yeah. uh, it's just real and raw. And I really like him. And he recently right. moved to Houston. Um, and, oh, nice. uh, you know, so we haven't got together and had lunch or something yet. But I, I think I want to. And definitely he's going to be on my show on November 2nd. So uh, it's Daniel yeah. Pratt. Subscribe yeah. to his YouTube channel if you've not heard of him before. Where, where's his emotions on his sleeve like a tattoo that's on fire? Exactly. And he homeschools his kids. So he's full in on the alternate uh, non-mainstream lifestyle. Um, Good for him. It's fantastic. Totally. Um, Russ Kembo, C-H-E-M-B-O, says, if you go to the NASA YouTube channel, they have employed a person to say, why so many dislikes on some of the comments. Really? Interesting. Hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, because you'd think that it's NASA, there should be like a ninety-nine percent approval rate, Rick, because it's 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 proof, right? It's 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 if NASA proof, you put the picture out there, it's gospel, it's true, because NASA would never lie to us, right? But that is the one of the big cruxes here, and that is, well, you're you're talking about a military wing of the U.S. government that was based basically founded on the ashes of the Nazi war machine. Because that isn't sinister in any way, shape, or form. Come on. You, well, that's why they're wear, that's why they wear white. Seriously, yeah. that is why those space suits are white and the crafts are white because they're the quote good guys. It's just there's, programming our mind. There's a great Star Trek Next Generation quote for that, and that was when Patrick Stewart said that um, evil men don't always wear black hats and twirl handlebar mustaches. You know, they usually cloak themselves in good deeds. And that's what NASA is. Yeah, they wear white. They seem like a benign science organization, but that's about as far as it goes. They turns out they were the most corrupt of the bunch. Mm. Uh, you know, compared to the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Oh no, NASA is the evil. You know, the evil sister in that group. Absolutely. Mm. Q and A enabled, so jump in and ask any kind of question or make a statement, anything. Tell us what you're doing for Flatoween. This is the Flatoween episode, and I am an Anunnaki queen, and wearing a sort of '60s Star Trek uh, outfit. And uh, I'm a science officer now because I've been exiled from my home planet. Uh, and we we have martial law. And here. martial, yeah, and I'm martial law, and I'm going house to house, rounding up people for the FEMA camps and taking your guns. <sighs> So uh, let's go with our next question. Um, this is just a, a link, and those of you who are in Q and A can see the link. But I'll just explain what it is. Um, it's a link to Rolling Stone and an article uh, about the basis for um, Rage Against the Machine. Um, it's an interview with him and talks about ISIS and Trump. So it looks like this is a recent Rolling Stone, and you'll be able to go look it up by just Rolling Stone and uh, Rage Against the Machine. So be interesting. I mean, it, it, that's going to be definitely conspiracy stuff that they're talking about. Yeah, and and with that, I've got to I've got to mention again. Look, we we you and I know full well there are celebrities talking about this. You know, it's it's you know, it's law of averages. There are celebrities right. out there that are, have already been looking into this. Even Joe Rogan's friends. You know, for example, you know he's on the on the fringe of conspiracy stuff now, and and but he's you can tell he's got friends that are looking into it, and he doesn't want to look. But secretly, I think they're all looking, but no one wants to come out and say it. So look, if you don't want to come out and say it then come out and make fun of it because that is going to get it just because it's so polarizing. It's going to lift it up anyway. So get on the other side of it and just sit and, and make fun of it. That's really what that, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this idea more and more 
make fun of flat earth because once you start doing that you you draw the attention you draw the spotlight to it and then the debate starts happening and yeah. once that happens you're well you know, a lot of people in. want to and this is a bad aspect of humanity and i think we've all done it and i try to not do it yeah. um as i become more of an aware person which every day i try to be mm -hmm. uh i don't do it anymore but you know how people in a group will start talking about somebody else in a negative way or laughing or whatever very mild maybe you know like oh well you know John's not here, so we'll make fun of him. If it's really a joke, that's fine. But I mean, some people really mean it. And that's why the making fun of Flat Earth works. You're making fun of something, and people are yeah. readily able to jump in and also you know, jump on and pile on and make fun. But yeah. you'd be stealthily undercover and yeah. promoting it that way. It's one way, you know, one way to do it for sure. Sure, sure. So Rage Against the Machine, check, uh, check out the article about them in a recent uh, edition of Rolling Stone magazine. Thanks to 33DW for that. As we continue with Q&A on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, the Flatween episode, this is Matthew Eugene Rosa with Doesn't the Birds Migrating Prove Flat Earth and more importantly, that the Earth is not spinning? Huh. Hmm. That's interesting. Very possible. Birds migrating. I, I don't know enough about it to actually... I don't either, unfortunately. I'm not a, what is it? Uh, ornithologist. Ornithologist. No, sorry, I. I got but nothing. I mean, you don't have to be an ornithologist to know that, I guess. Just some. Nor do you have to be an ornithologist to appreciate the beauty of birds. That's correct. <laughs> that was the most funny random comment ever. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. Well, thank you, and maybe somebody can fill us in a little bit more on on how that really works. Birds, because I'm sure everything relates back to the flat Earth. Birds, everything, everything does. Migration. Why? <laughs> Three words with Patricia Steer. <laughs> All right. So next question. After news and sports. <laughs> After this word from our sponsor. Flat Earth uh, keychains from Wakey Wakey and Matrix Decode. <laughs> Buy one now. <laughs> uh, Killing me. They are cool, though. They, they are, are cool. cool. No, I, I like what those guys are doing. I want to buy one. I just keep forgetting. This outfit is hot. How much longer do we have? <laughs> 20 something minutes. You know, Mr. Moot on one of my uh, shows was saying his outfit was really hot and he wants oh, to install I a fan. I can't imagine. Well, you know, it's the helmet basically that, that was killing him because these things are more or less insulated. They're not meant for room temperature. And uh, yeah, when he was, when I was looking at him, I was going, oh, he's going to be dying. <laughs> so. All right. Next, uh, next question is from Super Deep Field. Have either of you watched YouTube Flat Earther Debunker Five Red Pairs video? He's got pretty good arguments when he takes sunrise times for cities on the same latitude during an equinox, calculates the time the sun takes to appear in one city the next. It doesn't matter to me about anything that goes on in the sky, to be honestly, or to be truthful, because... It, all right, I'm, try, I'm going to try to make it as simple as I can. When it comes to the sky, you've got to think of it like a planetarium. Everybody talks about, you know, this little aspect or this little aspect, and, and, and they think the whole house of cards is going to crumble because of it. But that's not true. In a planetarium, it's all artificial. So you can do just about anything you want with the sun, including turning it into a directional light source, which I think it is. So don't worry about... Uh, time zones necessarily or sunrise and sunsets and and it's a minor point in in the grand scale of things so no that debunker is not going to go anywhere with it sorry just me all right sounds good i agree um i agree because it's just math yeah and, and many who are anti-flat earthers will say well what are, you, what are you talking about math that's how you prove everything well it it's math based on that you're living on a spinning ball so yeah, yeah good it's, is it? it's globe mathematics and most people again here's why you're going to lose any of you guys that think you're going to be able to do this with math most people don't like math they really don't they they barely made it through their algebra class in high school so you're going to throw what calculus trig quantum mechanics quantum physics you're going to throw that stuff at them yeah not going to work yeah, these are these are people that that watch football on the weekends not going to do anything Nothing wrong with football. Doesn't mean you. No, have no, no. I'm just saying. You know what I mean. I mean. You watch look, football. I, I do watch football, but I don't. I don't like math. Nobody likes math. That's why the the chess club and the math club were always the same guys, and it was really, really small. <laughs> they didn't talk to anybody. That's these, true. these are the guys that are trying to debunk it. 
Let's squash them. Yes. Um, Jason Campbell says the path of the sun and moon perfectly level symmetrical circles, spiraling cone, or my current personal favorite, the Mobius strip. Was that a question? That's a question for you. Throw, throw that one at me again. <laughs> I'm only saying for you because I don't have an answer to it. No, throw um, me the... Jason person. Campbell says the path of the sun and moon perfectly level symmetrical circles, a spiraling cone, or my current personal favorite, the Mobius strip. Uh, a combination of the first two. I don't know what a Mobius strip is. He, he might be right. For me, the, the sun and the moon, honestly, you want the most elegant solution? Take the yin-yang symbol and put it right on top of the azimuthal equidistant map and see how well it lines up. I mean, it, do I think it's, honestly, we don't know. We, we do not know how exactly, what exactly the paths are. Everyone's going to been trying to work out the details on that. I don't know if we're ever going to know until this thing breaks open. To, to be honest, all that I have believed in is that the sun and the moon are actually three-dimensional objects and their path doesn't stay the same. You know, it changes with the seasons and it changes with time, like a, like a needle on a record player. But yeah, he, he could have something there, maybe. All right, I've got to look up what a Mobius strip is. And you know what? I think I do know because I've seen this somewhere before and I just can't remember. Hmm. So I'll look that up in a moment. But thank cool. you, Jason. Have him, have him make a video on it. Uh, if he yeah. likes the Mobius strip so much, make a video. You don't have to narrate. Just put some text on it. Interesting. I'm going to look it up, though. Rub some funk on it. <laughs> Where does that come from? Uh, that was from Evolution with David Duchovny and Orlando Jones. Didn't know that one. Yeah. You are a wealth of information. You know little bits and uh, uh, little bits and pieces of movie uh, dialogue. And I, I don't. I watch movies and I kind of take the whole thing in and don't know the dialogue. Oh. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Next question is let me get it up here. Have either of you seen Ashley Webster's video, Tides and the Electromagnetic Energy of the Sun and Moon, and or P Brain's video on time lapse of the Sun Proves Flat Earth? I find both fascinating and great con contributions to flat Earth. And I've seen both. And yeah. Ashley yeah. does fantastic uh, experiments. Great work. Should be commended. She also does Google Hangouts, which are cool too. And P Brain stuff is great as well. Yeah. Yeah. They're both good. Excellent. I mean, you got to remember that Patricia and I both. Every day, pretty much, we set the filter to today. We type in flat earth and we see what the heck's up there. We set and the filter to stun. Yeah. <laughs> it's not working. Set the filter. <laughs> Change the setting to righteous. <laughs> the, um, I uh, it and we look, at, we look at everything that's out there. And uh, yeah, there's all, and it's getting hard, honestly. There's so many people putting out videos. Um, in fact, there, I, there was a video I sent you that uh, you can watch after this where a woman came on and it was like her first time delving into it. And when she typed in flat earth and just hit search, you know, just with no filter on it, she was so overwhelmed by the massive amount of content that she had to make a video of her own. And I, wow. I love that. I mean, it's the, ins the, the multiple levels of inspiration are, are just great. I, I love watching it. Okay. I've got to do some little thing behind the scenes, and I'm going to do that and let you talk. Boy, a lot of pressure on you, okay. right? No, uh, no, not at all. So what I'm going to do, go ahead, do it. Ready? Well, I mean, I can give you a question. If you oh, want. okay. Go, yeah, go ahead. Unless sure. you want to talk about something specific. Oh, I was going to talk about promoting your, uh, do another plug for your background, for your channel. Oh, yeah. Do that. And okay. just, what do they say in uh, TV? Stretch, stretch, stretch. Make it stretch. <laughs> <laughs> stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch right, it out. I'm going to turn my mic off so that I can uh, do the thing I need to do. So it's so a housekeeping yeah. thing with my, what do you think I'm really going to do? She's oh. going to adjust her underwear. So no. anyone out there <laughs> want to fantasize about that, feel free. No, and it's in a Star Trek, it's a Star Trek outfit. So the, um, okay. okay, while she's doing that, what I'm going to do is, far. <laughs> you can never go too far. Mm, true. The, All right. Back in a minute. Okay. So uh, Patricia's channel, her YouTube channel, needs a background. Her background is just a generic kind of uh, um, earth scene. It's not even necessarily flat. It's kind of fuzzy. But the reason was is because YouTube wants a much bigger image. So all the cool flat earth videos are flat earth stills are not very big at all. Uh, so if anyone's out there, anyone with Photoshop and, and wants to make some cool new flat earth stuff, honestly, if you really want to, somebody make some new flat earth graphics and put them online just anywhere because they just get snapped up in a second and get used for all sorts of slideshows, including mine. But 
YouTube looks for a video for the background. If anyone hasn't, you know, hasn't done one of these, it's like, it's big. It's like 25, 50 by 1440 or something like that. They, they look for a really big high res image. I don't know why they require something that big. I would, you would have thought that they would have wanted maybe something half that big and they could have stretched it, but they don't have any auto sizing in that program. So Patricia has been trying to find a new flat earth or conspiracy based logo for her YouTube channel. So please, anyone who's out there that's good with graphics so they know how to whip up something up real quick or, you know, and she'll give you full credit for it. You know, she'll put in there, you know, the graphic design by such and such, probably do an on-air mention. Who knows? She may even dedicate a special. She may actually buy you dinner. Let's just say that. Whoever makes the video for um, Patricia, uh, she may she may Not buy a video, the, uh, the background thing. Oh, the background. She may actually yeah. get you dinner. And what is, yeah, that's good. I'll do that. What is the size range again that I need? I forgot. It's big. It's got to be, at least, you'll, you'll see it in the thing. Um, uh, it's, I think it's 2550 by 1440 or 1400, something along those lines. All right. It's Sounds big. It's, 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 least, it's least 2500, but let's round it up. 2500 by 1500, whatever it is. It's a big image. It's wallpaper size. It's, it's big. It's meant for something like a, like a 24, 27, 30 inch monitor. And it can't be, I don't want pictures of me, and I had definitely don't want any pictures of potatoes. Even if hot potatoes is in my title, I, I, although I love eating potatoes, I don't think potato imagery is that cool. Well, uh, uh, this is uh, interesting. Joining us right now um, from deep inside the rabbit hole is the return of David Weiss. Uh. Just, you are getting some serious heat. I mean, you are a shell. You are so <laughs> cold. People are so upset, and I, I've... I wanted to respond and agree with them, but I told them the truth. The truth is, is that we just were acting and just playing around. <laughs> I wasn't really kicking him off. We decided that it would be funny. <laughs> that's a, that's twice now. What's up with her? I'd smack <laughs> her. <laughs> I didn't really kick him off the first time that he was on, and I didn't kick him off this time. But that's because it's the Flatterween show, and we provide the uh, the tricks yeah. and the treat that we provide was the cat that you just had, and I believe that's your cat, Anunnaki, right? That's Anunnaki, right, not Nephilim. Nephilim Anunnaki. is there somewhere, too. You really <laughs> have a cat named Anunnaki, really? I do. Anunnaki, Anunnaki Nephilim, and Zeta Reticuli. Wow, that's, that's some conspiracy dedication right there. <laughs> thank you. That's really, really good. Well, thank you for coming back, and in, David, in your own words, just so that anybody who was unaware of what happened... I did not kick you off. So you know what's funny is you said, hey, do you want to come back on the show? And I went to log in, and I get this black screen that says you are not allowed to back in. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's cold. <laughs> yeah, I don't really understand how that works. Um, but, yeah, um, no, we didn't really kick you off. It was all preplanned just for just for something fun to do. So Just for fun. Yeah, do David, you anything... if you ever, you ever want to come on my show, I'll kick you off too, David. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. In fact, that be should known. be a thing. Anybody, anybody who wants to kick David off their show, please. Yeah. <laughs> it could um, be your new signature. <laughs> I was on uh, Sirius Satellite Radio on the Opie and Anthony show the other day. Did you, did you get kicked off? Not, not a, <laughs> it, it, it was very difficult to get a, a word, and it was on the Opie and Anthony channel. But what, what was amazing was these guys are not open to anything. 9-11, Sandy Hook, none of it. They know nothing. And um, we're going, and we were going to talk about the – those things a little bit, and seven minutes into the show, I haven't said anything yet. They're talking about some news, and they started talking about the movie The Martian, and I just chimed in. I was like, well, the guy goes, I didn't like it. I go, well, that's good, and he, and he just jumps right into Flat Earth. We did you know, 20 minutes on Flat Earth, and um, I threw out that people are, I am getting hammered because I'm trying to, if you, if you pause for a half second, you just get interrupted, and I said that the Earth was spinning 24,000 miles an hour, and I knew that it was wrong, but I didn't go back and correct it, and not that it really mattered because those numbers were going every, over everyone's head, yeah. but, the, but it was amazing. My website, the, the Flat Earth page, got 6,000 hits during that, so again, whether I screwed up or not, we had a lot of new interests. I've been getting overwhelmed with emails, so... Again, you were talking about anybody famous, you know, if any mainstream yeah. channel, um, anything that you can get on to say anything, it's, yeah. it sparks people's interest. Even even if you're setting yourself up to be a punching bag, absolutely, because because they, you know, in the in the entertainment world or you know, in publicity, look, we all know the saying: any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> you know, we we know that so well. So yeah, yeah, I I love everything you do, man. Seriously. It was so funny. Do I. 
being on Sirius Satellite Radio, and I'm, uh, the first thing they start with, they're like, yo, he doesn't even believe in satellites. Oh, please, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> satellites. <laughs> let, me, let me warm up for a second, yeah. Let me tell you yeah, that's hard. Stuff, yeah. I'm surprised they even allowed you on there if you weren't believing in what they feel that they're using to broadcast the show on. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's crazy. All right. Are you off to do anything? I'm not kicking you off, but are you going to be doing anything for for Flatween tonight? I am uh, going over, visit some friends, have a couple of margaritas. That's about it. All right. You like margaritas. I like vodka, and Mark likes uh, well, a alcohol. Couple, yeah, I was going to say a couple <laughs> different sorts of drinks. We should, uh, you know, for New Year's Eve. I know that's a bit in the future, but you know how time goes. We're going to have an episode in which we actually have real cocktails. So you're going to be invited to that too. Oh, is that where we're, we're actually going to do that New Year's Eve? I mean, we're not going to get drunk while doing the show. That's crazy. Well, what's the point? Let's do it. <laughs> People would like to see it, I think. It's like because because that way we it can, it can it tune can, in to deep inside the rabbit hole. They get drunk every show. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> drunk, stoned, and who knows what else. <laughs> It'll be fun. You we'll have like see a some dysfunction and uh, alcohol abuse. Tune in deep inside the rabbit hole. All right, wonderful. I, I definitely and you and you put those episodes. You put them on your channel. They're on uh, they're on uh, SoundCloud and iTunes. You can just subscribe to it in any podcast app. Um, All right. I, if you do that, you can listen to double speed and get it over with quick. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to plug Patricia and I have a show on Mike Adams Network uh, called TalkNetwork.com, and it's called Truth Is Stranger Than Lies. Um, we had uh, Jaron on once, and uh, her and I uh, talked about. Um, some stuff on our first episode, and uh, tune in. It's free, talknetwork.com. You can download it, take it with you. Simple. Thank you for promoting that, and thank you for coming back, and I All love right. you, and I was not really kicking you off, as you well know, and anyone All who right. thinks so wasn't in on the I, joke. I can only take so much of Mark anyway. I'll see you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye. Oops. All right. I was going to let that joke slide and let people wonder about it, but there was too many comments he was receiving. He messaged you me. Gotta be careful. Message. You got to be careful with the conspiracy crowd. They they yeah. look at everything really, really closely. And I'm like, for example, and I won't do it now, but there's a reason why I don't put my finger in my eye. I don't try to do pyramids in my hand, you know, with my hands. I, you know, because the, the conspiracy crowd, the internet hive mind means, mean, uh, catches everything nowadays. So you've got to be careful what you're doing out there. Anyone that's doing this stuff, don't, don't try to do a parody. Don't joke around necessarily. I mean, yeah, we we kid around, you know. About I mean, I'm wearing things. Star Trek, and this is supposedly a symbol of Saturn, and yeah. But that's the kidding aspect. Obviously, I know there's no space. I'm not promoting space on a subtle, uh, subliminal level by wearing this. It's flat absolutely. Means. You, but honestly, people, she could actually be an Anunnaki uh, royalty member for all we know. So look into her. <laughs> <Seriously. laughs> I think I've been looked into so much that I. Surprise! I'm still standing. Again, yeah, nobody, um, nobody's comments about the martial law thing. No one cares. What? What? Because everyone <laughs> expects care. it because it's normal. It's part of the plan. Well, oh yeah, martial law. We right. All, we all, we all know strike what they pilot, and, and he's a police officer on the side. Yeah. That's what. That's what he is. Exactly. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Can he I, just be I a just... really smart, nice guy who's? doing good work because he found something that already existed and then put it into a very simple, easy to understand format. No, nope, can't that I, be okay? My day job, I beat up hippies and protesters. <laughs> okay. Just, just backhand them with the shield. Whack. <laughs> okay, back like teeth <laughs> mark, right there. Back to what we're doing, which is I don't know what we're doing, but it's Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes episode number 25, the Flatween episode. And I'm your Anunnaki queen, exiled from my home planet, now in Starfleet. And of course, martial law, Mark Sargent. That Coming was David Weiss. And <laughs> putting, putting, we're going to quarantine you on the basis of some Ebola scare. Right. And, then, and put you in the FEMA camps. And give you some uh, some inoculations of something that exactly. will We're definitely coming. make you die. <laughs> We're doing some forced vaccinations. <laughs> nothing, nothing serious. Just won't hurt you. Nah, you'll be fine. Just rub some dirt on it. <laughs> Here's some GMO food. Eat up. Good for you. <laughs> Nice. All right. Next uh, question is, here's a way to prove the moon may be an electromagnetic force. Some parasites are often most active during the full moon. Why? It's not due to gravity, surely. The parasites can be affected by frequencies. It's pointing toward the moon being a frequency. That from Becky G. 
I think the moon's got some multiple levels happening there when it comes yeah. to, yeah, it's, pro it's projecting a cool light, could be projecting a cool frequency as well, or a really strange frequency. A lot of, I mean, the stuff we've all heard about as the moon gets fuller and fuller, weirder and weirder things happen. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, not just the movies, but, you know, look it up. There's all sorts of weird documented cases. Look at, look at any police report on any country. It's, uh, yeah, very possible. But look at, look at things that have been around forever, like stories of werewolves and the vampire stories. You know, the, the moon, when the moon comes up, the vampire can come out when there's no sunshine. And the werewolf, when there's a full moon, uh, comes into, is act, kind of activated. And of yeah. course, these are stories, but s lots of stories that are age-old stories have some basis in reality. So, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. The moon... We look at it and we find it very interesting and some say the moon is a feminine force, mm -hmm. but also the moon is very, it seems to be kind of somewhat dangerous or mysterious, but in a sort of negative way, just, you know, like it's supposedly the light is a, a cool slash cold light and maybe mm -hmm. putrefies things. Maybe. So um, that's not good. That's no. not good at all. And it's used also as a romantic image, like going for a walk in the moonlight and that. So going to last the moon for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Perception Talks Radio, Jonathan, says, if you're doing a convention, I'm in. Did I just miss a joke you told? Nope. I did. Nope. Sorry. Was it a good one? No, it wasn't. No, no, just, just keep going. Keep going. All right. So, so Jonathan we, we, says, only, we only got a few minutes left anyway, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. It's almost uh, the top of the hour, as they oh, say. Oh, yeah. Thank you, by the way, Jonathan, for listening to the entire show. That's really cool. It is cool. I'm going to go ripping through these questions and maybe we'll go a little bit over because I don't want all of our shenanigans to make anybody angry that we didn't get to their questions because I appreciate all the questions, but it's impossible to answer them all because I'm it's, not a machine. It's your show. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've got uh, Atha Basca Media saying we are flat earthers since September only. We just plotted the following flat earth line recently. Sun and moon, Temple, Mexico, Washington, Washington, D.C., London, England, Rome, Italy, and Giza Plateau, all in a straight line. Wow. Wow. Yeah, there's actually been some people that saying that the sun, the sun's path on the flat earth actually is, is not uh, a perfect circle, that it's uh, a series of lines, which is really creepy. And again, it's really interesting. So, yeah. All maybe. right. Next question. Thanks for that one. This is Mark's Clues could do for... Flat Earth with Loose changed it for 9-11. You just need to pick a date each month and YouTube bomb the link to the clues on Facebook and Twitter. I actually often use your clues and in, in truth bombs because they're just so easy to understand. Um, and uh, repeat the action each month and it will snowball. P.S. Love the show from MNC Preeti. And, you know, your videos are easy to understand, but I don't want to be just like what I've been accused of is pimping out Mark Sargent. But your stuff is what woke me up, and I found it very easy. And then I went on to find all the other stuff from other YouTubers. So if Mark's stuff's not the stuff you want to send, send something, send anything. My, doing yeah. it often is the thing. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. My stuff is a gateway, is a gateway drug. And, uh, you know, the first one's always free, baby. But the um, it is also the... Um, uh, it's also Creative Commons license, so I let anyone reproduce it. And, and you should and forget about the hits that are on my channel. There's stuff out there that is getting way more hits than my stuff is, and you know it's it's my video. So I please anyone that wants to reproduce it, I do not monetize my videos. So you can take the clues, put them anywhere, make money off of them, have have fun with it, go to town, rub some All funk right. on them. And now I know what that means. Yeah. Sounds gross, though. But okay, I've always thought that the <laughs> moonlight looks rather laser-like. It turns out that phase-locking cooling lasers use, wait for it, clear titanium-doped sapphire. Ooh. Very cool. That's from Robert Poe. Nice. And uh, let's see. We've got Alex Rubio saying AstroTurf. I watched a video on how AstroTurf is happening in mainstream media. But but you know what? I know there's something involving flat Earth, astro, astro, space. Is that what he's getting at? But I know there's more to it than that. And maybe Alex Rubio can come back with what that is. It's something I remember reading and I, I can't Interesting, it though. Anymore. You're absolutely right. I never even thought of uh, astroturf yeah. as being a reinforcement. Yeah. A global reinforcement, astro. Yeah, yeah like, like, like astronomer, like astrophysics. Right, like right. Like astrology, yes. Um, we've got this. It's I recently saw a video called Truman Syndrome, which leads me to think that once a supposed delusion is named that, a prescription is sure to follow, perhaps for flat earthers. Oh, wow. You're suffering from Truman Syndrome. Take two pills and call me in the morning. Hmm. Or really, 
get somebody who looks like you in a martial law costume to come to your house and and uh, you know roust you out of bed. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do, you know. Do you <laughs> come with me. Is, you believe the world is round? No. Wow. Globe or flat? Globe or flat? Answer right or you die. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be heavy. Yeah. All right. Like Next the Inquisition. Up. Yeah, quite. Uh, Grant Carstyle. So they say on a flat Earth there is no satellites. Where is all the data coming from? Is it all fake data? No, no, it's That's... real data, but it's bouncing off of a ground-based system. Or right. they're using um, uh, those those weird reflecting blimps that we've. It's been all over the news lately too. Yeah, Google uh, loons are up. There's the um, yeah. Uh, there's you know yeah. No, the, so. the data the data is real, but it's not coming from uh, from satellite systems. It's coming from uh, an extended uh, ground based system. Yeah, the system, system. yeah, the Loran system appears to have never been shut down. Right, just had a Which sticker is... put on it that says GPS. Mm, there you go. You stole that um, from me, by the way. Yes, Thank I did, you. and with no credit given. <laughs> because you're the queen. No, no, no. If you weren't here and I was speaking of it, I would say, as Mark Sargent says. Really? Oh, yes, of course I would. Because this, because this thing intimidates you, right? No, <laughs> not at all. <sighs> Um, so uh, thank you, Grant Carstel, for that. Uh, we've got, I'm going to try to just do as many as I can here. Russ Kembo says, do you think King Arthur's Round Table was a representation of Flat Earth? That's pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Why not? Um, sure. We've got another question here. Is your mission, Mark, to have the trolls destroy Jonathan's confidence? Has it succeeded yet? Joke, sort of. <laughs> no, I, again, Jonathan is one of those people. Be, he He's got this weird aura around him that trolls don't seem to come after him. In fact, he has to go out of his way to pick fights with people. And uh, I don't I don't know what it is. I mean, he, like remember remember the the Sean McCrary thing where mm -hmm. Sean created a YouTube channel, you know, he didn't go anonymous. He got like 3000 uh, messages in his discussions page and Jonathan has like two or four or something like that. So right. please find Jonathan's channel and and pretend that you're angry with him. Yeah. Or or, you know, make a nice comment. That's what I would do. No, um, no. Don't show no. him any love. No. <laughs> don't do it. Paul R. says, do you guys know the root of the word planet? Which I don't know exactly, but I'm going to hazard a guess that it's plain. It's got to be tied to the Greek plane somewhere. Planer? Plain? Why? Is he, did he explain? Or did he just no say? Question, no answer to it. No. Oh, it yes, up. yes. Here it is. The root of the word planet from Latin placenta. Wow. A cake, flat cake from Greek placoneta. Accusative of plaquiosis, flat, related to plaques, level surface, anything flat. Cool. Wow. Yeah. More, more like proof it. right there. Like it. Thank you, Paul R. That's really cool. Um, if anyone needs a one-time video to show people about Flat Earth besides Mark's Flat Earth Clues, Scrawny to Brawny's new Flat Earth video is unbelievably great. Yes, it is. And I did share that the other day. Yeah. We both have seen it and we both find it fantastic. It's a really good video. Uh Oh, Crow 777 supposedly films flares. And we're fans of Crow 777. So he films solar flares from 233DW. We will look into that. Cool. Uh, interesting. I mean, solar flares may be real. I mean, they, you know, uh, but are they doing anything? I don't think they are. And, and again, if the sun is much, much smaller, it kind of diminishes the whole importance of a solar flare, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. If, it's, and, if a solar yes. flare isn't hundreds of thousands of miles wide and instead it's just a couple miles wide what's it gonna do it's not gonna right. do jack well some some are saying that um i think it uh um dutch sense says that it could potentially cause earthquakes so hmm. or maybe that was suspicious observers or kind of both um let's see we've got uh, this question here I read Ernest Shackleton's and Edward Wilson's journals. I read Shackleton's as well. And there was also a, a book on it. While they were in Antarctica and around December 22nd, they write there was a nighttime. Around December 22nd, they write there was nighttime. Globe Earthers claim that's just how they talk. They say even night when the sun is out. Is that true? From Demisco Will Demiso No Williams. idea. No clue. Yeah. Um, this is from Mr. Rich B.O.B. Ms. Steer, have you considered making an email list? Mark, I sent you an email. It's about chemtrails. I want to know if you possibly got it. I probably did. I get so many emails. Well, um, email him again and yeah, put something in the subject that will spark your interest. What do you want that to be, Mark? Uh, hot sex. How's that? Okay. Sounds good. 
Because you know, nobody um, gets those emails anymore. We used to get them back in the day, but not anymore. Remember all the spam emails and it was always, oh, you know. right, 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 right. That's true. But you um, weren't on this planet then. I know. Right. I was, yeah. Um, <laughs> not here. Good recovery. That was great. <laughs> Seriously, don't put you on the witness stand ever. Right. Um, cracks and Shards. That's a great name. I, cracks and Shards. C-R-A-X-A-N. Cracks and then Shards. Sounds like a what defective you, breakfast cereal. <laughs> here, little Billy, enjoy your Cracks and Shards. <laughs> It's a mother who wants to kill her child. Chase all pointy. <laughs> Abusive mom feeds child. Story at 11. My well, um, mouth hurts. <laughs> what do you think about a half sphere shade shade inside the moon that spins like in a lighthouse causing the phases of the moon? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Um, we've got... Um, am I mistaken in observing a decline in UFO and alien abduction reports since the flat earth enclosed world became a topic from 233DW? Yeah, that's good. I like that. And you'd have to because uh, it, uh, the NASA is trying to overtake everything with all their supposed mainstream stories. So, yeah. Yeah, good one. like that. Jay Biz just says hi all and happy Halloween. Hey. And um, let's see. I see uh, David Graham says, NASA said the New Horizons probe is nuclear powered. It went to Pluto, so they say. And see, that makes me believe oh, nuclear that. stuff isn't real. That's the probe he was talking about. Yeah. Um, well, that necessarily say that, that nuclear power isn't real. It's that the probe, the probe is a fantasy. Although if it's running off, I mean, honestly, somebody probably built it with some sort of uh, little nuclear engine but it didn't go anywhere i know that so let's see um from chris truth seeker ha you definitely had me fooled with a trick earlier that's good yeah that was david's idea i had nothing to do with it i was just merely a pawn in this little it game it's actually my idea <laughs> really yes i would have thought better of you yes it was fun to pretend to kick him off yeah I, I, I don't i don't i don't you don't do like that. it no you nope. don't like it all right, fine. I should just kick you off right now. <laughs> you <laughs> wouldn't all... dare. Right. I, I might wind up in a, fee, uh, a FEMA, FEMA camp. camp. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, I'm trying to find people's questions to answer who, because I've got repeat questions from repeat people, and I'm not ignoring you. I just want to get a few in from people who've never had a question answered here. Um, and uh, trying to get that done right here. Uh, Paulo says, P-A-U-L-O, when I think of an infinite plane, I imagine a sheet of bubble wrap. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. the puddles, yeah, I don't know if it would be that uniform. Uh, it might be, I suppose. But uh, other other worlds like this one on the outside, yeah. And uh, we've got, if satellites were real, then why are they so worried about the cables under the oceans from Russian subs? Quite funny that all of our stuff is wireless, but they say if those cables were cut, then we'd lose our internet. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I forgot that about that. Time? That one, I just yeah. made me shake my head. So yeah, shake your head. Was, uh, um, yeah, it was awful. Trimble says, the first time I heard Mark was on Pastor Don Spears' show, and he's been hooked ever since. Nice. Well, good. I won't, ago, I, won't, right? I won't. It was a little while ago, and Pastor Don. It was a. It was a great show, and um, you know, which is why I really watch my language and the things I talk about because of Pastor um, Don. You uh, really? Yeah. I mean, you swear like a longshoreman, but no, uh, especially off, off air. Oh my God, she's horrible. She lights up a cigarette and she just starts cursing. It's, it's <laughs> but, really. But the cigarette is with a very long, elegant <laughs> cigarette holder. Because no, that makes it better. That's right. Yeah. Plug, right. plug the, the, mass, the, the tobacco industry. They're probably sponsoring <laughs> you. Never, never have smoked. Um, Bill Dolan says, Are you two handing out candy to trick or treaters? I am not. You? Uh, yeah, I am if they show up, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> If I'm dressed like this, they may not. Uh, <laughs> They'll never come back again. Yeah, they um, may not. Masquerade says, I like your show. It's kind of hard to take you guys seriously dressed as you are, but are they flaunting Flat Earth and the Dome with predictive programming, or do they really want us to know? Good question. That's an excellent question. Can we end on that question? Or not? How, yeah. many, how many more questions do you want to do? Um, there's so many, so that could be it. I guess if you want. Yeah, we got to cut them off eventually, don't we? Yeah, but I do want to let everyone know that I do appreciate their their questions, and if I see somebody that comes up while you're answering this question that hasn't had their question answered before, I will put them in there. And and again, we're, it's not it's not that I want to necessarily get get up, but I do. There's some videos I get up. I got to upload the interview from last night, which we did. We we, we still got we still got stuff to do. 
Yeah. Oh, we do. <laughs> she's not happy with me. But that's no, okay. no, I am. I'm just trying to trying to find a question. Oh no, no, um, let's do let's do that one. And that is, are they trying to? Um, right. Are the, and that, because it's a good question, that's why I mentioned it. And that is, are they really doing predictive programming, or are they trying to, you know, they they trying to make it seem like they don't want us to know, but actually they do want us to know. And that's the thing I've been wrestling with for months, which is, do they are the power? Do the powers that be, you know, the authority, uh, the the super rich, the government, and the royal elite, do are they actually are they releasing these NASA stories really quick because? Of us or are they doing it deliberately to help fuel the fire that we're currently burning right now it's a tough call I, I don't I don't honestly know I mean it depends if you're a half full half empty type person if you're half full then you're saying no we're taking it to them we're gonna bust this thing wide open and it's gonna be this this wonderful thing but if you're half empty maybe they're doing it because they can't stage a really really big event that will overshadow this until they do so I don't know, maybe, I mean, I'd like to think that we're, 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 it's our music and that they're reacting to us. I'd like to think they're not proactive, but you know, don't, don't put your guard down. Don't put your shield down because you never know, you know, always look for plot twists. If you're ever watching a movie, always don't just sit there in your chair and say, oh, I know where this is going. Cause there's, you know, more often than not nowadays, there's a plot twist coming. So, yeah, it seems like NASA is filled with a bunch of bad writers when we're talking it as a plot, but yeah. you never know, they might get a good one for yeah. something, or, a big or thing. Or maybe at the highest level, they've got the best writers, and they're, and they're, they're weaving a story that even we can't see where, where the twists and turns are going to be. Uh, but again, I don't want to go down that road. I'm going to stay positive and you know, say that, yeah, this thing's actually happening for a great reason, could be the start of a new golden age, and that we're all going to be, you know, it's, it, we're going to be run into something wonderful. Well, Tinfoil Hatter says it'll be interesting to see what happens with the movement and uh, proud to be a witness and embarrassed at the same time because you know that it's never going to reach everyone uh, aside of, unless there's miraculous changes, which is a very good point. Well, and uh, also, I do want to give a shout out to uh, uh, YouTube user Lamp Shadius, who sent me some really amazing pictures. And one of them probably, according to what I've just read here, can be used for what I'm looking for. Um, and it's been, sent, it's been sent for two weeks and I haven't got to it yet because I have an overwhelming number of messages. So, cool. um, and those overwhelming messages actually came because you mentioned me on your show. And I do want to thank you for doing that. Uh, the last Strange World episode that you did. And I have been bombarded with literally thousands of positive well-wishing messages that was because i was getting quite frustrated with not flat earthers but some and not trolls really but some unsavory elements in the flat earth world who just try to bring other people down so that's why i haven't got to all my emails it would have been so sad if you would have been gone uh, it would have. It I would just have. got frustrated and hit a wall. I didn't do one of those, you know, how there's certain YouTubers that say, I'm done, and then they leave and then they come back. It wasn't like that. I just came to you and tried to get advice from you about what to do. I like, think. Get back yeah. in there and continue yeah. fighting. God, stare, get back in the ring. All right. Massaging uh, my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, was, my mouth. <laughs> exactly. Hold up the bucket so you can spit into it. No, no, that's gross. That's gross. Yeah. You're <laughs> say that. <laughs> But thank you for being here, and thanks to David Weiss. Uh, go enjoy uh, Halloween and handing out candy to strangers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, um, uh, what are you doing before we go? What's what are your what's your next show going to be? Um, that's a good question, and I do know the answer to that, and it's not coming to the top of my head. So pad Daniel, a little while. Daniel, not Daniel Pratt. Not Daniel. Um, you pad a little while I look that up. Oh, okay. While Patricia is trying to look up her busy schedule. Oh my gosh, it's it's so good that I can't believe I couldn't remember. Okay, it's go tomorrow, ahead. and it's the Morgyle. Oh, you got the Morgyle tomorrow. I mentioned him earlier in the show, but yeah. Fantastic. Morgyle, yes. That's great. So I, that's going to be great. And I have on Tuesday, I have Orphan Red. You've got Orphan Red. I've she's mine. Orphan. Back she's, off. She's, hey, hey, hey. Uh, Orphan Red from right up the road from me uh, up in Canada. And uh, she's going to be talking to us via radio. Sorry, no video for all you guys. Oh, you can there. watch my last episode, episode number 24, and see her in full color. There you go. You could turn off the sound on Patricia's thing and turn on the sound on mine and superimpose only. Um, exactly. It, it'll be kind of weird because then it'll be Patricia with my voice. Well, be, that would hmm. be very weird indeed. That would be um, weird. One last question coming in from Mr. Rich B.O.B. Yeah, Sorry, I know you didn't want to. I'd uh, like to have one. 
which is oh, Mark and Trisha sitting in a tree, blah, 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 blah. Uh, then comes marriage. Then comes Jonathan pushing a baby carriage because a baby crying during a live stream is annoying. <laughs> Jonathan is our nanny. Nice. Yes, exactly. Nice. So That's great. Thank that you. That ends our show. With and that, with that. Of both of us. And uh, thank you for being here for the first ever uh, hope, hope of many uh, Flatoween episodes of Flat Earth and other hot potatoes. And all you need to do to be happy in life is to keep it flat. Keep it.